What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Extreme Drummers Podcast, episode four. As always, massive thanks to everyone who's still listening and who is uh, messaging me and stuff and telling me you're enjoying it. It's, uh, yeah, it's really wicked, man, because I'm, I'm really enjoying this. So to hear that you guys are enjoying it as well makes uh, makes it all worthwhile. So thank you so much. Um, but yeah, episode four. This week is a special one. I've been a massive, massive fan of this dude for, well, since pretty much since I started drumming and since I started getting into metal. Um, Adrian Alanson, he's uh, an absolute legend, not just in the metal community, but in the drumming community. Um, and if you don't know who he is, then you've probably been living under a rock. <laughs> but um, At the Gates, The Haunted, The Lurking Fear, Cradle of Filth, Paradise Lost, just to name a few of the bands that he's uh, either playing in now or has played in previously. Um, yeah, and I've I've had the pleasure of meeting Adrian a, b- a whole bunch of times, and he's just a, a lovely, lovely person, as well as being a, obviously, legend um, for for various reasons. So yeah, this was a real special one for me, real treat for me. And yeah, it's a it's an incredible chat. We chatted for a long, long, long time, and I was I was thinking about editing it right down because yeah, we chat for a long, long time. But I just thought, screw it, why not just put it just put it up? Uh, if people want to listen for two hours, then people can listen for two hours. If they don't want to listen for two hours, then they don't have to. So yeah, but it's a it's a really long chat, and it's just a great chat. It's super super honest, super candid. A lot of cool stories from the old days, and some you know a lot of stuff about what Adrian's up to now and yeah it's just wicked and it was just a real real pleasure to uh to speak with him and um I really hope you guys enjoy it as much as I did and uh yeah so I hope you enjoy as always normal places to get in touch and keep updated is Instagram at extreme drummers podcast um or downwilding drum which is me uh facebook.com slash downwilding drum um, or there is YouTube, just search Extreme Drummers Podcast, all of these get uploaded to YouTube, and there is also ExtremeDrummersPodcast.com, and that's uh, that's everything. So yeah, thanks so much everybody. I really hope you enjoy the episode, this was a wicked one. Here we go, Adrian L. Anson, Extreme Drummers Podcast, episode 4. Good to see you man, how are you doing? I'm good, man. I'm, I'm, yeah. I mean, I'm considering everything. I'm, I'm doing all right. How are you? How's, uh, how's life at the moment? How's things? Um, it's, it's pretty, uh, confusing state at the moment. First, <laughs> first with the music, but then also, uh, when this pandemic started, we decided that we we're going to sell our house and move out to, to the countryside. Oh my and, god! Uh, and. Uh, you know, we, uh, me and Amber run a, uh, my wife run a photography studio. Yeah. And, uh, and, um, so we, we were planning because we had to shut due to the pandemic. Of course. So we yeah. figured, so we figured we'll, we'll sell the house in London, move out to the countryside and build a studio. Wow. On the, la- on the grounds. And we found this per- perfect old house that we were going to, needed loads of work but i had like all the grounds that we needed yeah and then and then we got a seller or a buyer straight away on our house but he kept he like three times he dropped his buyer in the chain oh no so so, so this has been going on like now for like about seven months <laughs> oh, and, it, 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 <laughs> and e- each time uh, he's lost his buyer. We put our house back on the market, but then yeah. you got to drop. Then you got to drop the price because it's been oh, relisted. Yeah. yeah, so it's just it's just been a bit of a ball ache, to be honest. Oh man, but, are you still? So you're but, still in the original house that you're still trying to sell. There's been no movement so far. You're still where you were. None. <laughs> none. Oh man, and there's just lo- loads of uh, really intrusive viewings with. <laughs> the corona mask and, and people being funny about taking their shoes off and stuff and just oh my god so <laughs> uh, that's uh yeah. that's an extra uh thing that you probably weren't expecting to have to deal with on top of uh, <laughs> on top of everything else no, <laughs> no totally totally not totally was not. that a um was that a plan that you had before all of this stuff or is this a kind of a fresh plan that you've that you've come up with since all this craziness I mean, picked off 
I mean, it's a plan that we had that I sort of wanted it to come into place, like maybe when I turned 60, you know, like <laughs> perhaps in 10 years' time. Yeah, but actually, yeah. I, actually, you know, like we don't go out that often anymore. So mm. it's, you know, and uh, the idea of not having to spend thousands of pounds rent in the studio unit yeah. seemed like quite seemed quite appealing <laughs> yeah, and exactly and and also this uh, fa- it's an old farm that we're buying actually uh, and there's mm. no neighbors at wow. all wow so so then i'll be able to have a live kit at home which is Dude. really appealing oh, that's the dream yeah. that is the dream yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> wow yeah. so you're working towards that dream still <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. We- we'll see i think it'll happen one day um, so what are your what are your days looking like these days? Like what um, now that you're not obviously touring anymore, like any of us? What uh, what's how do you fill your days? I actually just just a couple of weeks prior to the pandemic breaking out, we had some yeah. friends around the house, and uh, one of them uh, was a keen cyclist, and uh. and he and he said. Uh, <laughs> You should totally come out on a on a bike ride because he just bought a new bike, yeah, or a, a new second hand bike, and, and you should come al- come along. And I came along. I've got this like old steel bike that I like super heavy, and he had this yeah. racing bike, and I was just hanging off like a wet flag at the end. <laughs> Obviously, it's a, it's it's one thing when you're just cycling from one place to another. But when you're cycling like that for exercise, you push in a completely different level, which I yeah, just yeah. wasn't prepared for. Yeah. But, uh, but I'm a pretty stubborn kind of person when it comes to physical stuff. <laughs> so, so I sort of stuck with it. And then another friend of mine who's also a keen cyclist, he said, you can have one of my, he had like 10 bikes in storage. Oh my God. Wow. So he said, so he gave me one of his bikes. Which it's like a ten-year-old model, but it's you know it's it was a bit uh, beaten up. <laughs> no, it's not beaten up. He barely used it at all, actually. Oh, okay. It, like your twenty-four-inch yeah. kick drum. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, since since uh, I got that bike in in June, it took a few months to sort of get it together. Yeah, yeah. After the, after the initial. Uh, and the weather wasn't quite right in the beginning. But now, since June, I've cycled like nearly two and a half thousand miles. Oh, my so, God, dude. Wow. So, so I'm just like completely hooked on it. Wow. And where, from, from where we live, uh, um, we live so northeast London. And yeah. Epping, Epping Forest is just uh, above us. And then uh, we go Har- nice. uh, Har- Harlow on the other side of Epping Forest. And then like you could go up towards Brentwood and Chelmsford. It's, wow. it's just st- it's stunning. And you don't have to go very far outside of London either to, to just be on a, like a country road where all you meet is like some cows in a field. Yeah, I was going to say just some incredible. cows and a couple, of, uh, a couple of tractors or something, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so... so I've been doing a lot of that. Also, I have been quite lucky, actually, because last year was going to be uh, the 20th anniversary, 25th anniversary for Slaughter of the Soul. Wow. Uh, and we were going to do, like, mainly tour for that. And then yeah. in, in between dates, be at home and prepare the new album, which yeah. we have just uh, finished recording and stuff. And... Um, yeah, so like I was busy the whole, all of last year leading up to November when I finally recorded the album. Yeah. Uh, pre- preparing the demos for that. And uh, I had some other sort of session albums that, that I did at home on my V drum kit. Yeah. So it, it, it's, it, aside from losing all those things for Clutter of the Soul, I've been pretty, yeah. I've been busy. I was gonna say because it seems like because you uh, you recorded at Grondal right as well. Um, yeah, Nation Street. Yeah, as it is or whatever. Yeah, it is, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Because I I saw you posting about that, and again I saw you posting yeah. about the the Austrian band and doing all the stuff in your because you've got like a little drum room type situation, haven't you? At the that's, at home. That's right. Yeah. And I was thinking, Jesus, he hasn't stopped. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone else has taken time off, and now with the cycling, I guess you've added uh, you've added a whole extra thing on top of it. As yeah, well. no, it's great. I mean, I, I'm completely addicted to having a full schedule. I don't like yeah. it when it's uh, when it's empty, and then uh, I just uh, it never is empty anyway because we have because we have the studio. There's always something to do. Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm kind of, it's a, so day to day, it's my wife that runs it, but I'm kind of like a janitor. <laughs> <laughs> so, and there's, a, there's always something to fix there. And then yeah. occasion, occasionally, like in the, um, in between the lockdowns, we had a few shoots that I was the, uh, the cameraman. Yeah, so I, yeah. took, I, I took the pictures. So, so um, are you still doing yeah. any? Do you still do any photography? Because you, uh, you did yeah. what me and Jeff and Bill actually consider some of the best promos that the band has ever had. You know, do you remember when we came to your? Is it? Are you still yeah. in that studio, or is it? A, is it a different oh, studio no. you're right now? No, no, it's moved. That got too expensive. That one. Uh, oh, okay. But yeah, we have. We still have that mortuary table that. Uh, yeah, that Ben was on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah man they're, yeah. they were they're still some of the best ones that i think we've ever had and we always talk about that we're saying we we need to come back to you for maybe for the next album to get them <laughs> to yeah. get some more yeah there, that, was, sure. that was good <laughs> yeah for sure i uh, um yeah f- photography is a big interest for me so like uh mm. um yeah so it i just haven't done that much band photography since since then it's mainly sort of um these makeovers for for glamorous ladies that we do that yeah, where amber yeah, does yeah. amber does the hair and makeup and or if we if it's a higher budget we'll have someone that does the hair and makeup and then mm. amber tells them the, what poses and because some people haven't been in front of a camera before and yeah, they just want some na- nice pictures and she'll yeah. direct them stand like this stand like that i'll take the pictures yeah. and then amber photoshops it afterwards yeah so well as you yeah, know it's it, not very uh it's not very intuitive standing in front of a camera when you're not used to it i mean i think everyone in a band understands that don't they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> how annoying yeah. that could be <laughs> yeah it's a, it's a good way of shutting people up actually point most people to point <laughs> yeah. the camera at them and then yeah then exactly just freeze <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> um i was gonna say because with all the uh you getting into the I guess it's kind of fitness, isn't it? The the bike riding. Have you ever yeah. been a fitness guy before? Have you ever got into stuff like that? Previously? Well, I did. I did. Um, I practiced martial arts before I joined at the gate ah, for about okay. six years. I was uh, training this uh, Wing Chun Kung Fu. Wow. <laughs> that sounds the, I did. <laughs> yeah. Well, it. I mean, on the uh, I was really young when I, I was doing that, that, and I couldn't mm. I couldn't tell you first thing about it now. <laughs> I mean, it's it's been like nearly nearly thirty years, or it's over thirty years since I wow. since I did it. <laughs> so, so <no> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's I, it, yeah, it's probably more like thirty five years actually. It's, like, <laughs> <Wow. laughs> it's terrifying. <Time> flies. <laughs> yeah, it sure does. But yeah, I, no, but um. I've always uh, sort of been running. Mm. Running was uh, sort of my main thing before, but uh, <clears throat> running around here where I live is kind of a bit shit because it's like <laughs> tarmac <laughs> roads and cars. Yeah, yeah, and, exactly. And and want to get to like a field or like a, a trail, I had to drive for about ten minutes. Yeah. So, so like a. a the run, uh, the uh, bike riding came as a, a nice exchange for the running, actually, because I, I was starting to feel the running in, in my knees and in my ankles yeah. and hips and stuff. It does eventually if if you're running on tarmac. If, if I was you're going to say heavy, tarmac has a big has a big effect on all that stuff, doesn't it? I think. Yeah, and uh, you know, I'm a I'm a pretty heavy guy, so <laughs> like you slamming, slam down on your joints, and after <laughs> yeah, getting exactly. older, you eventually you you burn out 
Yeah, understandably. I was going to say though, because like you've always been, and uh, not only from my experience, but from everyone who I know who's played with you or known you since you know for a long time, you've always been an incredibly <laughs> hard hitter. <laughs> and is that is, is is that just kind of the way it comes out with you, or has it kind of has it been as a result of enjoying kind of you know physical activity? Is it kind of uh, a mixture of the two, yeah. maybe? You know the 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 heavy hitting thing started when we joined when we joined forces with Studio Fredman with Abigail Gates when we went to record ah. Term- Terminal Spirit Disease was yeah. the first one uh, where he started like like nagging me about hitting the snare harder <laughs> and and when we came to record Slaughter of the Soul it was almost to the point where we like move the hi hat over to the to the right side in order to give enough yeah. swing room for the snare. Wow. But like and uh he was he was pestering me a lot on the album because <laughs> <laughs> and uh and since then it's uh, sort of like been like ingrained yeah. in me. And th- and that album we changed the drum parts to be like more more static and less freely mm. all freely bits we just cut them out yeah, yeah. i don't know if like if you listen to it you'll hear like even when the riff repeats there's not even a crash it's yeah beat, i'm gonna say the, i've I, I noticed those types of things yeah and that that was intentional yeah. was it that was totally intentional. yeah oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah that, it was intentional yeah just to make it as machine like as we could the, mm. with me playing it yeah and uh and it, it sort of came from that. It was it got like quite debilitating actually because when <laughs> when we came out on tour, I didn't have any endorsements at the time, yeah. and the sticks sticks were just breaking left, right, and center. <laughs> and you know how expensive sticks are when you just buy them off the shelf. Oh yeah, man, uh, absolutely. And uh, we we were sort of supporting the whole time, then, so we weren't making any money. So. Yeah. I went and bought these um, a head drumsticks. You know, the oh yeah, the alumin- ones, yeah. yeah, yeah, and and they really like, especially on the snare hand, it, yeah. it really fucked up my wrist. And uh, after uh, after we'd done uh, done a few gigs, I started getting this really severe pain in my wrist because oh, like I just had that in ingrained in me I, I hit harder hit harder hit harder <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like a military kind of like like a, a general military general just telling you like hit harder, hit harder. <laughs> yeah but like then i think it was because i hadn't been playing for that long when i had been playing for about seven years or eight years when i joined up the gate yeah yeah <laughs> seriously i mean we're practicing and, and yeah, uh, yeah. And by the time we actually started touring, I just wasn't physically prepared for it. And it was, mm. and by the time the band broke up at the end of that touring cycle, I had like a lot of some sort of pains in my shoulders, pain like especially on the left arm, like in yeah. the elbow, in the in the wrist, in the fingers, and all. Uh, but uh, when we formed the haunted, I I sort of tried to hold back a bit and. Mm. Mm. But then, um, uh, when I joined Cradle, actually, one of the um, people from Big Fur, the drum company, um, Marcus yeah, yeah. Sokoli, his name yeah. was, uh, he was the artist rep then. And because uh, first he just said, oh, uh, I'll just send you some five Bs. Yeah. And he sent me five Bs. And then, but then he saw me play and he said, Dude, you, <laughs> he saw my hat because I've got like quite big hands. Yeah, and he said you should totally like try like a two B or like a rock even. Yeah, and uh, and after I swapped to the rock sticks, the uh, um, the hard hitting sort of happened on its own. <laughs> and I was and say, they're like tree drops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like uh, the the pain that shoot the stick does a lot more work for you then. Mm-hmm. And although my playing is still very physical, so I've, I've sort of been conditioned now for the years of touring to yeah, sort of deal with, deal with it, and you only need to push that hard. Mm-hmm. Like it, it looks really physical when I play, but like I think 
I'm, I'm not streamlined as a lot of <laughs> other players. And, uh, but I guess that's, uh, that's one of the things that I, I like about the type of music that the bands that I play play because mm. it, it is so physical and it's kind of, sometimes I see it like a bit like a fight. <laughs> with the drums <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it makes sense and i guess when you know especially when you're having an amazing gig or you know and there's a, an incredible audience and you're feeling good you can push mm. that kind of you can push the physical aspect even further then can't you because your body's yeah. kind of feeling good and you know i get is there days though when you're just like fuck i wish i played jazz or something <laughs> <laughs> I, certainly when uh uh, not so, not so much now without the gates because we don't play those kind of duration shows. Yeah, yeah. like uh, we we'll play like if we're playing headline, we'll do like an hour ten, hour mm. fifteen, maybe. Mm. Uh, but uh, when I was in Cradle, we sometimes we would do an hour and a half, an hour forty, Ooh, and uh, there was wow. a there was a, a lot of stuff that was like bar Barker's drumming. It's mm. you know, on those albums for me it was really, really physical <laughs> and re- <laughs> re- re- really hard to sort of keep up with. And then you end yeah. up tense in yourself. And if you're on, I think I think there was one year we were doing, we were away for like the, be- the best part of the year. And towards mm. the end of that, I was I was just in pieces. <laughs> <laughs> like the, the everything hurt. Yeah. And actually, um, at the beginning of that touring cycle, I broke uh, the metacarpal bone behind my little finger and oh the right God. hand. Wow. So, it, so that's the bone that's behind the knuckle in the hand. Oh, so like this one here, pretty much. Yes. Oh, yeah. wow. So, uh, and we had, I think we had seven gigs left on the European tour. And yeah. we couldn't obviously cancel, so I got I got some strong painkillers and an ice bucket <laughs> oh behind by the drums. Oh and my the, god! But the, I I just can't even describe the pain, <laughs> even with the painkillers yeah. as well. Oh, dude, it was it was nuts. It was <laughs> especially when you because I'm sort of relying on that little those yeah, three little fingers for yeah. like when you're playing blast or whatever any yeah. beat you're playing you're sort of yeah. relying on those fingers and uh like my little finger couldn't move it was just hanging there <laughs> like yeah, lifeless, was, like a rag doll <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah that was oh that was God. tough and wow but I, that sort of uh, afterwards became like a uh, sort of like a frame of reference for me. Yeah, of course. Because uh, when it, whenever else uh, I had an injury, I sort of always thought back to that with the ice bucket. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, man, that must be like a kind of almost like a game changing moment. Like I can't let that happen again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The the other uh, sort of quite serious uh, injury I had was um, I fell backwards when we were bowling with Berea. Oh, Jeff told <laughs> me this story actually. Jeff told me this. Yeah. Did you, did you break your wrist or something? Was it your wrist? No, or? no but imagine you fall backwards and you yeah. go to brace brace your fall and your Ooh, your arm yeah. is like down. So it, like the front. The in, or the inside of your wrist gets stretched back, extended right back. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we had so we had a, a gig the following day, and uh, <laughs> like my my left hand was so fucked that I couldn't even put my double pedal together. Oh my god! It was Dude. like when when it came, so I could sort of roughly uh, play like slower beats but when it came to yeah. blast i just skipped playing the snare <laughs> so yeah, yeah, i just couldn't i just couldn't move oh my arm my God, i just couldn't dude. move my hand it was absolutely horrible <laughs> and, uh, and that's an understatement i think <laughs> it took it and that took months to heal like oh. lit, literally like six months for oh for that to, 
for for me not to feel that again. Oh, and uh, so, but it wasn't actually broken, was it? Just kind of like a bad no, strain, I, or you know, I think the muscles and tendons were just overextended. Yeah, and uh, and then it just seized up in this horrific cramp. Oh my god! But, but it was to the point that I couldn't, I couldn't, you know, like you grip with the fingers. Pinch your fingers, yeah. No, oh. and holding a stick like that and playing a gig like with. Well, again, yeah. I'm using using rock sticks as well. It's not like you're using seven A's or something. Or like... <laughs> <laughs> and brewery is pretty, pretty, you know, pretty intense. It's not a it's not a slow gig, is it? There's some there's some fast mm. shit in there as well. <laughs> yeah, uh, the, it was yeah, it was a nightmare. Oh my god! Uh, but yeah, um, so so f- the physical side of it's pretty much always been there, from what you're saying. <laughs> it has, it has, yeah, yeah. So you kind of it, almost, yeah. yeah that's kind of ingrained in you now from from uh from those experiences that that's interesting though because like i guess was was recording i guess recording in general because you were you were really young right when you when you started all the stuff with at the gates yeah um i was 19 when i joined at the gates yeah. and uh it only just turned 20 when we did uh gardens of grief okay and, and um, uh, was it a massive it must have been some massive kind of learning, uh, like like a learning process, like a quick learning process, especially recording with Fredman, I guess, like going from uh, kind of, yeah. Well, anyway, yeah, yeah. Fr- fr- I mean, Fredman, we didn't work with till like yeah, album number three. Yeah, true. So, so we'd done like a few uh, recordings before then, but uh, like, yeah, uh, that type of music was so new back then. So it, it wasn't, yeah. th- there weren't like uh, any f- sort of like set out framework for mm. what you have to do in order to qualify being like a death metal band. And we <laughs> yeah. certainly, I think at the gate certainly made all, uh, all our attempts at being like a different, doing different stuff, especially in the beginning. Yeah. up to terminal spirit disease we were really trying to sort of push the boundaries of yeah. what the band was about you know yeah, and yeah. Uh, and with that came uh, came some really weird drum patterns <laughs> on the first like, on the first two full length albums the mm. like um the guitar player that we had at the time uh, called Alf he yeah. he used to sit like up and late at night programming weird drum beats and then <laughs> like chopped off beats and then he would make riffs around the beat and then yeah. he'd just show up oh yeah the beat goes like this and play on the tape second mm. <laughs> i'm n- not yeah. sure that's gonna work <laughs> yeah oh there's uh, there's um uh there was one song uh called blood of the sunset mm. and and uh when we played it, uh, like uh, I, there's a like the beat has this weird splash symbol uh, choke in the middle choke, of the yeah. beat. Yeah, um, but because I didn't have my kit when we were in the studio, I couldn't reach the splash. <laughs> That's the kind of you know we didn't have a boom stand for the splash. So then Jonas <laughs> had to come into Jonas had to come in because like it was so on such. Um, like you know, when you play at the absolute border of what you can do, yeah, like, yeah, like uh, you have, you have percent kind of. <laughs> yeah, I, it in my case, it, it was like I was attempting to do stuff that I could do, like maybe if I reached one hundred and five, <laughs> <laughs> and like it had to, I had to be super warmed up and. Plus the pressure of the studio, I guess you had the pressure yeah. of actually being in the room, and yeah, <laughs> yeah, and uh, and uh, I remember it, it, it sort of came to a head when we recorded "We Fear a Kiss the Burning Darkness." Yeah, because uh, we we went to Studio Sunlight again, and uh, the kit that before he used to have like a D drum kit there, you know, yeah. the old D drums. Mm. Uh, so so 
like everything apart from uh, the snare would be like electronic pads. Ah, uh, I, I heard that. Yeah, I remember hearing that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, this time we said, okay, we want an acoustic kit. Instead of just renting a bigger car and bringing my nice pearl kit from Gothenburg, <laughs> we said, I will just play on the kit that he's got. And he just yeah. got some old Rogers kit <laughs> with like all straight, all straight stands and wow. like, like good, a jazz kit almost. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Yeah. And uh, you couldn't tilt the bass drum. So like I had to, <laughs> so you couldn't tilt the bass drum towards you and the toms could only be mounted flat. And oh like that was it. Like it sounds like small things, but when you're playing, when you're oh, trying absolutely. to do, you're trying to do stuff that you aren't really able to do anyway, I, I, <laughs> in yeah, the best exactly. of circumstance. <laughs> so, and in so the it, studio as well. <laughs> yeah. So it came to, it came to this song and we just kept stopping at this part. And then we had to go back to the beginning because you can't yeah. drop in. I was going to say, and yeah. then we, so then I said, can, can we just stop the uh, cut up splash symbol out? No, it has to be that. And then Jonas, our bass player, came in and did the symbol jokes. Oh, so I would wow. hit, I would hit the splash, and he would he would <laughs> pinch it in between. It. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so. Oh man, see the kids these days—they don't know how easy they've got it now, right? <laughs> I mean, quick. Equipment is so much better. Mm, mm. Like uh, the the pedal, the pedals, just the pedals that were available early nineties, like yeah. were absolutely shit. <laughs> I mean, if you if you wanted a if if you wanted a double pedal, yeah. like Pearl had these ones with a uh, with a cra- with the uh, bent left beater. Oh, Do you yeah, remember those? Them, yeah. yeah, 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 and. And, um, <laughs> yeah, the, the lag on the left was just, it was Unbelievable. just crazy. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. I can imagine. <laughs> but, I mean, the, till I got, I got hold of a Camco pedal, mm. the chain, the chain drive Camco by Tom, the I think. The ones, yeah, yeah. That, that was a really good pedal. The action was really good, but then, because I, I was uh, just stomping at the pedal, I wore the link out. Oh, and okay. like you went to the music store, oh, I need to buy a new link. Oh, it's not sold in Sweden at the spare part. You <laughs> you do have to buy a new pedal. So, okay, oh well, buy buy a new pedal. <laughs> so oh so it's, from that aspect, it's a lot. The gear is a lot better now. Yeah, I didn't even think about that aspect of it. I was thinking more along the lines of like recording and writing and and being in the studio. But yeah, of course, even. Yeah, even gear wise, I mean, like it's yeah, it's come so far, isn't it? Like unbelievably yeah. far. <laughs> I mean, even like you said with uh, recording, it's so much easier to record today. Mm. Mm. And like back back then when we did when we did those early at the gates recordings, it was uh, to tape, and yeah. uh, like the first the first album, said, oh no, you you can't drop in unless there's yeah. like a, a stop so sometimes you have to change the song and put the stop in <laughs> in order in order to have Make it doable to drop yeah. in <laughs> <clears throat> nowadays it's like or at least when uh, the project i've done lately it's uh, like we'll do as long as you can play with high energy yeah and then we'll yeah. just and then we'll just take it from there later yeah yeah, absolutely. So like, in separate, almost separate sections, like two or three separate sections, yeah. maybe. Yeah. So, mm. like uh, with uh, the last at the Gates album, I would play like the intro, the first verse, and yeah. maybe the first chorus. Yeah. And then, like, it, uh, gents would say, "Oh no, you dropped a little bit in the energy. Let's go back yeah. and come in." And then, so so it's kind of it's it's creating a a dynamics that w- would be very difficult to maintain during those early years. Standard. Yeah, a- absolutely. And I guess there's that's why, you know, all the legendary albums like, you know, Slaughter of the Soul and a bunch of albums that you've played on, obviously, but 
there's so much character to those because you didn't have the option to do it a million. Because even with the with the most recent Carcass album, you know, I did mm. um, at the same studio. I did it probably five or six takes of each of each track. You know, like f- probably probably five of uh, mm-hmm. not not all the way through. Again, same like you. You know, I do it in sections, but there was yeah. f- like four or five different versions of that um, all the way through. And you just think, yeah. like, that physically wouldn't have been possible. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> like, you wouldn't have had enough tape. There wouldn't have been enough time. You wouldn't have been able to do as many drop ins, you know. And it's just, and yeah. that's, I think there's why there's so much character and so much kind of nuance and stuff to those older recordings because the, it, you physically couldn't do it like that. <laughs> so, yeah. Like, People were holding on for dear life. <laughs> yeah, and, exactly. And, <laughs> you know, I kind of, I kind of miss that charm. Uh, mm. Like on, I think, um, like, of course, I, I, I love the convenience of how you can record <laughs> yeah, now. But yeah. like, I really do think that like a, a huge part of how the, the foundations of uh, metal today sounds mm. uh, it ha- has been lost because it's mm. been sort of like it's sort of edited yeah. to pieces almost and yeah. also because people are able to drop in and do like multiple takes and if it's not quite right it gets edited yeah anyway uh, yeah, and sound it, replaced like, and all that it, stuff yeah like it's it's sort of losing <laughs> losing the struggle and the f- and, and the uh, sort of human aspect of it yeah i was gonna say that's that's the thing is that the human aspect is is the is the important side of it it's almost like and i guess it's kind of ironic in a way that as you were saying when you were recording without the gates you were trying to make it as machine-like as possible mm. whereas yeah. now it's it's literally it's literally machine-like <laughs> you know yeah because it's, yeah. it's actually and a machine <laughs> it's it's it, yeah, that is a paradox. I mean, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, when we did that slaughter of the soul album. He said, uh, Fredman said, you need to play to click track, mm. and I'd never played to click then, and it was I just couldn't do it. Mm. Like, like even a four, you know, four count in, okay, start, <laughs> and then by. By beat number three, I'm out against the click. <laughs> Dude, but like it's it's one of those things that it's you can't just do it, can you? You can't just yeah. like a metronome is you you assume as a drummer, um, you know, oh yeah, everyone can play to a metronome or playing to a metronome no. is straightforward because that's what a drummer does; they keep in time. But mm. play, keeping in time with something that's not you is you know because obviously you have your own internal timekeeping and blah blah blah, and you play a certain mm-hmm. way. But keeping yeah. in time with a click is, you know, oh, it's 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 still a struggle for me. Like I still have to practice yeah. it a lot, you know, especially with you yeah. know when you're doing exercises and blah blah blah. That's one thing. But when you're actually doing a, a song and you're trying to put feel into it and stuff, and uh, yeah. and again the studio pressure and all that kind of stuff with a click, it's still fucking hard, man. <laughs> it, it is it is hard. I think uh, like it's a, it's not a natural thing at all. Mm. And uh, I had a really horrible experience actually when I joined Cradle. The, uh, there was some I can't remember his name now. The producer on the on the EP the, that I played one of the songs on when I first joined before okay. Midian. Yeah, yeah. I was out, um, from the Cradle to Enslave EP. I Cradle played on EP, on two. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I played on two tracks on that. And uh, producer said, "So what's the tempo?" Because he was. As I was setting the drums up, oh, I did. I don't know, and, <laughs> and but like I, we need to, I need to generate the grid and set the click up and stuff. Uh, yeah. uh, click, no, uh, <laughs> no click. <laughs> and and he said, "Wow, well, this is going to be a mess. It's going to be a mess." Yeah, yeah. yeah. But then it was fine because we, uh, me and Stuart, the guitar player at the time, just played the song together a few times, yeah. and that was fine. But when we came when we came to do uh, Midian, like the producer came in and he said, "It has to be recorded to click." And then I would go to the rehearsal room a few hours before the band would show up, practice with the click, and then stay after we practice for like six hours with the band, 
Then oh, they would leave. God. Then I would stay and play with the click again. Oh and my uh, God, wow! And when it came to the studio, because at the, at this point we uh, no one had like a home recording setup yeah, yet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> so we didn't have any guitar demos to click. Mm. And and then uh, because all the material had only just been finished before we go in the studio. Uh, like none of the guitar players could play to a click. So, <laughs> oh so then God. it was like, so then it's like, okay, how do we solve this? Uh, so I recorded the whole album just with a click, humming the guitars in my head. Oh my God. No the first time I ever. No, just humming it. Oh my God. The entire Dude. album. That's incredible. <laughs> and it was uh, like, uh, to this day, I can't think how the fuck I got through that. It was just <laughs> was some of the some of those songs go for just like some nine minute songs on that. Yeah, there. and the arrangements aren't super straightforward either. There's some no, kind of uh, proggy, I not know, proggy it, but you know what I mean. They're kind of all over the place with the arrangements. Of some of them. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, yeah. Oh my god! Wow, and that was, I mean, in because in my memory, that was. That seems relatively recent, but obviously I'm I'm getting older. We're all that's getting older, lot. aren't we? Now that that's how that is <clears throat> twenty twenty years ago now since that oh, was recorded. Jesus Christ! Wow, yeah, twenty one, okay. twenty one actually, because it was recorded to the summer of two thousand. That's fucking crazy! Wow, time really does fly, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> I remember that. It really does. Out. Wow, fucking hell! <laughs> but um, yeah, I was going to say, like, as far as writing as well, like, obviously you're in. Yeah, you're often in a lot of different projects, and I'm sure every different project has a has a different way of writing. But with at the gates, especially, um, is has the writing situation changed? Like, I'm assuming back in the day, was it just get in a room, as you said, um, the old guitar player program some drums every now and again, and blah blah. Mm. blah. But is it still cut relatively traditional to how you would have done it in the old days, or is it is it kind of modernized? <laughs> like now with me being in england and the other ones in sweden oh yeah uh, i guess it's uh, tricky anyway yeah <laughs> yeah uh like we don't really rehearse or we don't meet before going in the studio to rehearse the stuff so it's uh like for for the last two albums jonas has written all the music and tom mm-hmm. Bell vocals and then he's written it with like uh, scratch drums like yeah, yeah. like the, here's a slayer beat here's here's like yeah, a slow yeah. four Amazing four beat guitar player uh, program drums <laughs> yeah and then he would then him and tompa would have like a good solid idea of what they want the arrangement to be mm. <laughs> and uh, they'd send that to me and i i would do versions on on my roland kit yeah and se- and send it back and forwards then we'd tweak the drum arrangements Mm. So we got them to precisely down to the hit what I was going to play. Because yeah. <clears throat> if we were a rehearsing band, that's what we'd do in the rehearsal room. Yeah. You'd de- decide on all the parts yeah. prior to going in the studio. So the same thing happened for this album. Yeah. And um, uh, yeah, so I, I, I knew all the parts before. Yeah, I got that. Do you like but, to, uh, Do you like to be super prepared with that stuff? Do you like to know exactly um, what you're going to play, or do you, do you not mind having some kind of improv room here and there? I I don't mind actually either way. I pre- I, I prefer to be prepared, but yeah. I I don't mind if uh, if the tables are turned when you get to the studio. Like for for this album and the last one, that was the. Pr- the studio was the first time that I played the parts on a live kit. Wow. So, yeah. So uh, with this, <laughs> <laughs> I've sort of got used to that because I haven't had like a live practice set up mm. for since I left Credo basically wow, in, okay. in, in the UK. So, um, yeah. So getting to the studio, like the first day feels a little bit weird, but that's usually yeah. the day that you're setting up the sound anyway. Yeah. And that, and then uh, you get to it. But like in this, uh, for this album, uh, Jens had some ideas, uh, like change this drum fill, uh, like 
uh, change the accent here. And and yeah. uh, jo- Jonas was there in the control room as well, and he had some. Uh, so we, we did tweak it a little bit on this album. Mm. And uh, there are some kind of quite proggy parts on this album that oh, uh, interesting. <laughs> uh, that uh, the drums sort of uh, it's sort of freestyled a little bit out of <laughs> not having practiced. You know? <laughs> so it became so some of the some of the fills became something that they weren't like on the yeah, demo, yeah. but uh, you know. It's all for the better, I'd, I'd like to think. And, yeah, and there's that, and, and I think, yeah, I guess, as we were saying before, with the kind of uh, the human element, I guess those kind of in the moment things that you do in the studio that aren't planned, they kind mm. of, I guess, they keep a little bit of that human excitement, don't they? Which, uh, which obviously mm. used to happen back in the day a lot more than it does now. So having a little bit of room for improvisation is probably quite nice to keep that. You know that yeah. human thing alive. Keep it alive. Keep it non-machine like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for for sure. And especially uh, during the sort of more experimental parts on this album, there was more room for for going a bit sort of mm. more free. Do you uh, generally so, yeah. have uh, again? Uh, it's hard because I guess you uh, you've played in so many so many bands that it's it. I guess mm. it's all specific in different bands, but generally. Do you like to have kind of freedom or do you like to be given a direction? Like, cause I get, cause you know, I'm, I'm, I can't, I can't even remember all the, uh, all the albums you've played on, but there's been quite a few, isn't there? But like, you know, cause obviously mm. there was P- PL, I'm assuming was very different to how at the gates is and, you know, and yeah. um, obviously the haunted and stuff. And is it generally, do you, um, do you generally have freedom across the board or has there been specific so, situations when you've been told it has to be this, obviously the splash thing that you were telling me about earlier, but, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> uh, I mean, um, um, the free, there is of course freedom and in all, all of uh, the projects. However, if uh, like uh, Jonas, uh, for example, in at the gate has written a song and it's, you know, this is a slow, heavy song. Mm. There's like, I'm, I'm, there's n- no matter how much I t- twist it, there's not going to be a slayer beat in it. <laughs> so, <laughs> or a blast beat or anything, yeah. <laughs> no. But, uh, I mean, um, the, the sort of freedom happens during the uh, writing process, I guess. Because mm. that, that's the time that so, sort of equates to the old school time in the rehearsal room when you wrote the stuff in the room together. So uh, during me doing demos at home on my V-drum kit, I tried to sort of stretch the boundaries when, yeah. uh, when, I do, when I do the demos, deliberately stretch the boundaries and play stuff that are far from the scratch drums just yeah. to give a different perspective of what it could be. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and the times that actually shapes the song. Uh, yeah. Other times it's like, oh no, what's this baller? <laughs> like get rid of it. But uh, <laughs> the fuck at times, <laughs> at times it actually leads to a good new idea. Mm, mm. Yeah, again, and, uh, and that's that's, that's bringing back the human element too, as well. Kind of yeah, trying something a bit yeah. different and unique. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And uh, I mean, all the bands you said, like Paradise Lost, there they like greg he's a master drum programmer he's oh, absolutely really? wow i never knew that in, incredible at programming drums wow and uh, and it took it took like uh, a little little convincing for me actually to to get him to uh, ease on that a little bit <laughs> and because uh, the fir- the first album um uh, tragic idol that i recorded with him mm. uh, he he was him and nick write the music there and they they were very much uh, uh we have an outline of what we want the drums to do yeah and and i said that's fine but like uh, it it'd be cool if i could sort of make those parts mine a bit yeah absolutely uh, yeah. and uh, that's and that's sort of uh, what happened and when when we got to the studio uh even then, I sort of like changed some of the drum fails and changed yeah. a couple of the beats and stuff. 
and uh, yeah, so that, that there was a lot of freedom within within the, the, the kind of the framework. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I guess. I mean, I don't know about you, but I, I sometimes find having that almost having like a box is almost more freeing because you know you have if if you're just given a completely blank slate, there's so many mm. options that you just yeah. you kind of sh- you kind of shut down a bit whereas if you know well this is me this is me anyway but if you mm. have you know here is the here's the box that you can kind of um improvise within then it yeah. almost it almost brings more uh, for again for me uh, it almost brings more ideas and i find that that's almost a, a better way to work when you've kind of got creative you've got f- creative freedom but within you know within a confined mm. space <laughs> if that yeah. makes any sense at all <laughs> yeah it does it does i mean I've done uh, a few albums now for a band called Chaotion, mm. um, from uh, where the, uh, some of the members are from uh, Beirut. The main okay. songwriter is from Be- Beirut. He lives in the uh, Netherlands now, but um, I, I did the last album and uh, one that's about to come out. And some of those songs, he sends me just the riffs. Oh. And the, and the, they are arranged in a, in a song. There's no vocals to it yet. So I get guitar, uh, and if there's keyboards, there's keyboards, then bass, and then do do what you want. Wow! And a, a lot of times, <laughs> a lot of times, like it, it turns into a song that he hadn't predicted it to be. Yeah. And and he he'll either like it or just oh no, what's this? Go back to the <laughs> yeah. drawing board, yeah. but like, like on the last album, I, um, uh, there was like a, sort of a harder, harder turns of uh, like, uh, no, we wanted it to be this and this. With this last album that we've just done, it's uh, a lot more free, and uh, yeah. there was uh, there were songs where he was just like, yeah, that's great. It's not what I had in mind, but that's it's brilliant, <laughs> and we'll work. And the song gets like a new lease of life to mm. rather than him just recording the guitars at home mm. to a click. And then yeah. uh, like I put beats that are completely different to what he originally had in mind. Yeah. So, so yeah, that'd be interesting when it comes yeah. out. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess, again, that, that also goes back to um, uh, the human element and everybody having such different influences that you know i've i've said this before on on this podcast but you know me and you mm. could could listen to the same riff and you know even though we will definitely share some influences and we share bands that we like and blah 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 and we're yeah. both metal drummers but we'd listen to the same riff and then we'll probably both come up with very different parts probably some similarities but you know there yeah. would be there would be a huge amount of differences in that and it's it's again that, that kind of shows how important the kind of human element is with all of yeah. this kind of trying to strive for that as much as possible anyway i think that's really for, important for, for sure for sure i'd, I'd like to believe even uh, though we're in a, like a fairly mechanical uh, mechanically <laughs> controlled <Yeah>. environment <laughs> now i think that like uh i'd, I'd like to uh, although i'm a you know death metal drummer <laughs> essentially or rock yeah. drummer turned death metal yeah. drummer but like i sort of like to think that i have like a little bit of and uh of uh, a, a little bit of a vibe to contribute to the project mm. that i'm involved with because uh, otherwise it'd be pointless it, you know like if you if i get hired to play on an on, on an album and they have already written all the parts it's kind of like yeah you can yeah. get anyone to do that so there's yeah no, absolutely otherwise someone with your experience as well because I mean, I'm sure you can attest to this more than most, but um, playing, the more musicians that you play with, the more you kind of learn and the more you absorb and the more, yeah, even things like when a guitar player or a a, a member of, you know, the band gives you a drum idea, it's it's a lot of the time it's something, for me anyway, it's something that I would have never thought of in a million years. And I'm like, huh, really? You want me to try that? And then you try it, you're like, oh, actually, that that was quite good. Shit, that's much better than my idea. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah i mean it, and uh, like i've sort of put my own pride aside yeah. many times you know like i 
like I play, I see myself as a drummer f- for the better of the song rather than for the better yeah. of the drum parts. Absolutely. And uh, like, I'm, I'm kind of like more interested in the song kicking ass than, than me having yeah. some like, fun, so fancy <laughs> feel that, yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm, exactly. I'm so, so not interested in that. Like the, <laughs> yeah. the better part, what's best for the song, no matter who comes up with it is, Mm. is best in my book i think mm. well and i think that's i think that's testament to how many bands you've played with and how many projects you're still asked to do and how busy you are i think the fact that you know ultimately that is the most important thing as much as mm. a lot of us don't want that to be the case you know but i I totally agree with you i think the song should mm. absolutely be the most important thing and i always find yeah. that i i pull back until i'm told to go crazier if you know what i mean so yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah, someone shows a riff, and I'll play something super basic, and then they they mm. can have the, you know, they can have the um, the suggestion to say, "Oh no, go go crazier." Cause I don't want to be the yeah. guy that's going fucking crazy, and then they're like, "Whoa, whoa, 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 chill out." <laughs> 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 you never want to be that guy. <laughs> yeah. No, well, I I mean, even if I wanted to, I couldn't. <laughs> 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 like, but like, I for me, I kind of don't like listening to that kind of music yeah so, absolutely so you know i grew up listening to acdc def leppard motley mm. crew twist mm. and sister and you listen i mean tommy lee is probably the most flamboyant out of those drummers <laughs> but even he even he plays for the song yeah so like absolutely it, they, he plays some fl- flashy parts on the first album mm. but <clears throat> i think yeah uh, the song was always the key yeah, element and when that he was he's doing. more of a as what well, like because uh, obviously people treat him as kind of as you say one of those flashy drummers but he was more of a kind of showman the actual drum yeah. parts themselves were were super musical i thought for the most part yeah you say, and yeah it was for the song kind of relatively straightforward it was more his kind of look at me when he was on stage which i think a lot of people didn't like but as far as you know drum yeah. parts i thought he was super musical yeah Totally, totally. So, um, yeah, and that's kind of uh, that, uh, going going back to like the early years without the gates. That's mm. uh, when we uh, changed the sound of the band uh, yeah. for Terminal Spirit Disease. That was one of the things that we wanted to let peel back all all the crazy shit that we can't pull <laughs> off live. <laughs> <laughs> and stop kidding ourselves <laughs> yeah and uh, so like make the song simpler and let the melody yeah. of the song or like the rest of uh the key element of the song come forward and yeah. not like a load of splash symbols and shit in the way yeah uh, and films <laughs> that i don't pull off anyway when we play them live so <laughs> so <laughs> serving the song as it were more than more than yeah. serving yourselves i guess yeah yeah <laughs> but so back in again like really early pre at the gates times mm. were you were you more of a like a rock a rock dude was it um or were you already kind of a metalhead i, I, I mean i was it I was. I would like to say that I was a metalhead because I mean yeah. I I grind, but like you call metal then back then was sort of ACDC. True. So, true. So yeah. I mean, Black Sabbath, so, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was naturally that into Black Sabbath when I was younger. Yeah. And the fr- friendship circuit that I was hanging out in was so it was uh, ACDC, Twisted Sister, Def Leppard. Yeah, yeah, and, okay. yeah <laughs> and a little bit uh, on the countryside. I mean, because the you you listen to the bands that you saw in the magazine, yeah, and of uh, like, of and um, I mean, it was, and also we lived in such a small town, and what was available, mm. like the I remember the heavy metal section in the record store was like one of those like little crates. Yeah, there was like maybe. <laughs> Uh, on the, on a good day, there'd be like fifty albums in there, so you wow. were sort of limited to what what they had in as well. Yeah. But um, uh, yeah, when uh, like Metallica came out, uh, like mm. we 
I, w- I was totally into that. Not that I could play that kind of music then. Yeah. And, and, and the, cause I, prior to, prior to At The Gates, I had, uh, I had two other bands, but it was like roughly the same, mm. same members. Okay. In, in one band, I had like many different constellations and different, different yeah. music styles as we grew into other music. Mm. And then uh, when I got to my late teenage years, I was going to a thrash band, like maybe 87, I think. Mm. And uh, we were trying to play like uh, Anthrax. Uh, yeah. We played a, some Anthrax cover. And um, then I, the singer in the band started getting into uh, like, uh, Celtic Frost. And, uh, okay. and then yeah. I think he... he 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 had scream bloody gore as well and oh, okay and yeah. and and it's like well, fuck let's try to play something like this and, <laughs> and but then because there were no no one else in our little village yeah, that were trying to do that so yeah. so trying to work out what the guys were doing on the album was super hard and yeah, like from a from a physical point of view like you have no idea what the drums yeah you know like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and again, again, that that moves again back to the difference between then and now is, again, I mean, we're obviously a, a different generation, but even my generation <clears throat> was the same thing. You didn't have YouTube. There was very few videos available of yeah, especially of your favorite drummers and stuff. So yeah, you had no fucking idea what they were doing. You would, you just have to listen to the album as as much as possible and try and pick mm. out the tiny little bits and be like, what the hell is that? <laughs> he can't, surely he can't be playing that. That's way too hard. <laughs> then, like I had a, I have a funny example of that actually. When I rejoined the Haunted, there was a, there was one song um, called, called Silencer. That we yeah. that they said we want to play, and I said like, "What the fuck is he doing?" I was listening to to pair on the <laughs> album. I can't work it, can't work that fill out. I just couldn't work it out. And it, you get, you know, you get blocked with something, and it's like yeah. the harder you try, the harder it becomes. The worse it gets. Yeah. <laughs> I went on, went on YouTube, sure enough, there's some young kid playing it <laughs> perfectly. <laughs> and I was like, thank you. <laughs> like, Cheer, cheers, YouTube. Nice one. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and these are all the but, uh, the struggles that, uh, well, I mean, you know, I guess we're going to see a whole different generation of musicians. Well, we're already seeing, I, I guess, mean, a whole different generation of musicians now, aren't we? And, the, I mean, the level of it. The level of players in in the bands uh, that are coming out now is just nuts. Yeah, they, I mean, uh, and it, understandably uh, though, because they've got all the resources. I get you'd be annoyed if they weren't yeah. that good, because they've got all the resources. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I mean, I think you, the, obviously, I didn't have I didn't have anyone showing me like mm. how how stuff is done, and I sort of learned to, learned the hard way. But I, I think, like, if I had someone teaching me along the route, it, mm. like, a lot of stuff that would have taken a lot longer yeah, uh, would have uh, been, get, that knowledge would have been gained quicker. You yeah, know, like, yeah, uh, yeah. like, if you could see, like, it's one thing just hearing yeah. someone playing something, but if you see them playing it, then, like, you it it's in in two dimensions you know absolutely so, yeah you so, can kind so of you understand can pick it. it you can take it in can't you as opposed to just listening yeah. to it over and over trying to figure it out yeah yeah so i think that in in combination with that there's so many more people like music mm. is so much more accessible now mm. and Again, like you were saying so, with uh, the 50 records like I, you can go on spotify and listen to 50 records in 10 minutes <laughs> Yeah, that is not. It's not. <laughs> but like, I find it exciting at the same time. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, no, I'm not. I'm not sort of uh, trying to compete with with. Uh, yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? With, it's kind of. Um, and, well, I mean, well, you know what Jeff's like. Jeff's very grumpy about all this stuff, and he hates it. But I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think there's, a, I think there's a lot of positives to the fact that music is so much more accessible now. And you know, I, yeah, I, I'm sure you're the same. But I would have killed to have some kind of Spotify or 
iTunes, you know, when I was a teenager, when, you know, those years when you're really fucking into music and all you want to do is listen to music. Because, you know, I love yeah. music still, but I'm, I'm not that bothered about checking out new bands that much anymore. You know, if a new band yeah. comes along that I like, then sweet. But, you know, otherwise, yeah. I'm not going to be hunting Spotify for hours and hours looking for new mm-hmm. bands. No. I went, uh, you know, I kind of... Uh, there's a double-edged sword for me because like I, although I take sort of great pride and still liking the same music and yeah. the st- same same still favorite albums as I had like yeah, yeah. fucking 30 years ago <laughs> uh, it, 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 at the same time I, f- I feel like uh, I'm maybe restricting myself in a, in a bit because there is yeah, so true. much there is so much good new stuff out there that like mm. um that uh, you're sort of missing out on. And uh, I have, like, in our friendship circuit, there's, like, people are obviously a lot younger than me. Because <laughs> <laughs> my, uh, my wife is younger than me, so then it's automatically the people that we yeah. hang out with. <laughs> yeah. are like, and, but, like, uh, one of the guys that we ha- hang out with, he's, like, maybe 15 years younger than me. Yeah. 17 years younger, actually. And he's... Yeah. Like the kind of music that he listens, he he's into metal, mm. but like the kind of bands that he listens to is like I've never heard of them. <laughs> <laughs> and if there's a band that that he's that I've heard of, it's one that I instantly dismissed. <laughs> so Why do you I think you my, <laughs> Yeah, I'm not going to say name any say, of them. I won't. I won't make you. Uh, I won't make you name any names. But <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah there's something to that because I guess well I'm I'll, I would be a similar age to that guy probably um, but I'm I guess I don't know maybe I'm just an old soul or maybe because I've been hanging around with older souls for uh, for the majority of my drumming life maybe because uh, yeah because my favourite albums and bands are you know still the Slayers and the and the, yeah. you know the obituaries and the at the gates you know and all the and all the, the bands from that era that there's there's a mm. handful of newer bands that i really like but i think i guess it's his mindset because i know a lot of people older than me that that don't listen to older music as well so i, I guess it's mm. maybe it's maybe it's just personal taste what you want out of I, what you want out of music you know i don't know i but, think so mm. i think yeah. so i find it, it it's really it's really good fun actually when we're when we're out traveling without the gates because both uh, to- Tompa and uh, Jonas uh, Stolhammer on the new guy in At the Gate are yeah. massively into discovering new bands. Uh, like super, super on the prowl the whole time, wow. scouring the internet for the for these new bands coming out. And although, like the bands, uh, the bands that pre- get presented, like I don't always like them, but ever so often there's like something. Fuck, this is good. Yeah, yeah. I guess there's so many though, isn't there? As well, it's it's hard to, for, for mm. me anyway. It's hard to know where to even start. <laughs> yeah, I think I think uh, like the main thing for me now is sort of uh, discovering new types of music. Mm. Like uh, for, for this for this um, last at the gates album, I've, I have listened a lot to King King Crimson. Oh yeah, which yeah. Which, which was always uh, like uh, stated as a big influence for early at the gate stuff. Yeah, yeah. And but back then I just couldn't fucking stand it because <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's like like these these days I'm I'm listening quite a lot to to early albums. Yeah. Also, because uh, um, on uh, Roadburn two years ago we we opened a set uh, at Roadburn with uh, a cover of Red. Oh, King wow. Crimson. Wow. And awesome. uh, so so it took me like about eight months to learn to play it. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, to it's, not the most, it's not the most easily accessible music. It kind of makes sense why no. you, di- you didn't really get it. Cause I, get, I remember hearing it as a teenager and I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I guess there's a time and a place because I remember hearing, uh, um, I can't remember what it was. Um, I think it was probably Napalm Death when I was a teenager. I was into metal, you know, but I wasn't mm-hmm. into extreme metal yet. And I remember, I think it was Napalm Death, and I was like, "This is noise. The fuck is this?" And I think there's a, yeah. I think there's a, a time when your brain is 
ready and when it's not ready if you know or maybe your tastes change yeah. i don't know what it is but um uh, yeah. yeah and then all of a sudden it just clicked i was like oh okay this is sick i like this now <laughs> yeah i think it's got to do with the circumstance that uh that you're in when you hear it as well you have to be in the yeah. certain types of music you have to be in the right frame of mind in order mm. to sort of uh, latch on to it yeah and, and soak it in properly yeah so do you mm. still do you still mainly not i mean not mainly i'm sure you listen to other stuff but are you still a big metal listener do you still listen to a lot of metal i mean we, we don't have a stereo in our house i don't oh, have really? a turntable <laughs> we have so we have a we have this uh, sonos speaker system oh yeah 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 so uh so if we listen to music we listen to stuff that we both like yeah. so there's a, like a, a lot of blues a lot of 60 70 stuff yeah um and uh like a lot of uh rockabilly and psychobilly music gets played yeah, as, well, yeah. as well that's cool uh but like if there is any sort of metal that get played it would be like black sabbath yeah, and yeah. hyper negative yeah maybe some monster magnet <laughs> but like if i listen if i want to listen to like early morbid angel or or mm. something like that i'll do that when i'm out driving the car or if i'm out on a run yeah, there's a time and a place so, for that stuff. I guess it's not really chilling yeah. with the uh, with the wife kind of music. Is it? <laughs> for some, for some wives. <laughs> yeah, I th- yeah, some I'm wives sure some people, him. some people out there, they they do just chill on a Friday night and listen to Morbid Angel, which is which is very cool. I respect that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't go down in in my house either. <laughs> <laughs> we, it was we had a it was a funny funny moment. I'd, um, uh, a, fr- a friend of uh, ours who used to play drums in uh, in Marduk. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, Frederick uh, Widdings. Oh yeah, I've and, met him a couple and, of times. Yeah, and, yeah a super nice guy. And yeah. uh, they were they were playing in London, and we went we went to see them because uh, like uh, his girlfriend was here as well, and she's a close friend of both mine and Amber. So so we okay. all made a thing of it and i said so amber said uh, like uh, what's uh, what's marduk like <laughs> <laughs> she's ne- she never heard them and i said well I, i'm i'm not sure it's going to be your thing <laughs> and and, uh, and uh, <laughs> And we we said okay, let's stand by the merch, and we said, so we stood by the merch, and they they came on, and she, she just looked at me and uh, can we leave? <laughs> I think we, I think we were in there for like two songs maximum. I mean, respect. If you've never heard Marduk before, even staying for two songs is is pretty pretty good, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I I quite like that kind of music live. Like mm. I, like um, we went to see uh, thirteen forty nine. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. that's uh, uh, that's, even, that's that, almost another the next step, isn't it? Thirteen forty nine. Yeah, <laughs> but it was fucking sick. Like super, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good, super good. I loved yeah. it. But that, like, I tried to recapture that vibe listening to them at home, mm. and mm. it's just it just for me it didn't translate. It was mm. it. it I guess uh, again uh, that kind of music is very it's very raw, isn't it? And I guess it, that's why yeah. it works so well live. And it's 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 yeah. always hard, dude. It's always hard to to capture that live feel. I don't. I mean, there's probably a handful of bands ever that have really really done it justice. You know that live feel. Having a having yeah. a really well produced album is one thing, but having that kind of live vibe is is almost yeah. impossible to capture, isn't it? In the studio, and especially for yeah. as you say, music that's that ferocious and like. <laughs> <laughs> in your face <laughs> i mean that kind of that kind of music needs to be enjoyed live yeah, it, it's totally a live music and for me it doesn't although uh, I, I liked it live i did, like i wouldn't put it on at home yeah you know? no, I, it, yeah i can understand that can understand that yeah. completely that again that's all taste yeah. isn't it? and everyone's completely different oh yeah um, for sure for sure i mean yeah and um as far as because it's speaking of different bands and different tastes Obviously, mm-hmm. you've always, I mean, pretty much since, was it since the end of At The Gates, that the original end of At The Gates, obviously, that, yeah. <clears throat> is that when you kind of started getting busier and busier and you start doing more and more projects? Or were you already doing lots of projects in 
when you were in at the gates back in the day because well, again you've all you've always been super busy you always seem to be in a million different projects has that always been your mindset or uh, is it kind of just happened that way <laughs> uh, i mean i like i like a lot of different types of music mm. and uh, uh i i love playing in different types of uh, or like uh different uh, set uh, constellations where yeah. you get like different different musicians i find that like you always there's always something you can learn from them mm, absolutely and uh, also like the way bands are together it's very different yeah, yeah. and I, I i kind of like it on a social level it it you know it's and it's always appealed to me and uh, when when we lived in gothenburg or when I lived in Gothenburg, like I played in a few different bands. I played in this band that sounded a bit like Danzig. In yeah, uh, but that was like a case of they had a room next to our room, and mm. uh, you you sort of get chatting in between rehearsals, and then oh, we don't have a drummer, fancy helping out. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, like a, a, a quite a few of, uh, the situations that I've ended up in have, have been just that, that, wow. that I've, I've just been there at the time when the drummer was needed. Mm. So, a uh, and a place, I mean, almost like luck in a way. <clears throat> well, yeah, I think so. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> to, to a certain extent, I mean, mm. um, right place, right time, the, maybe is a better way. Yeah, of the, it. <laughs> yeah. The, I mean, the fact that uh, I got the cradle gig was, I mean, a bit of a, a, a fluke, really, because oh, really? like, because uh, I, I knew them a little bit from this tour we did, where cradle was the opener. Then there was at the gates. Then an after my headlined. Wow! That we did uh, like we did a few weeks in uh, ma mainly Germany, Holland, Belgium, mm. like the early nineties. Uh, but like I didn't keep touch with anyone apart from Barker a little. Yeah, we, we sort of mailed snail mailed each other a little <laughs> bit, uh, and uh, but then it happened. Uh, I, I was in uh, Holland. Uh, playing the Dino F Dynamo Festival with wow, yeah, with the Haunted, and uh, I actually just bumped into Danny at the bar, and wow. uh, they'd had uh, I don't know exactly how it how it happened, but they just had a shit gig, and the the drummer they had at the time uh, had also had a shit gig, and it was his so sort of first biggest show that they'd done with him, mm. and then uh, just a few a few. Months before that, actually, I'd been to see uh, Dimmer Borger with Barker in oh, Gothenburg, yeah. Yeah. and he gave me he gave me the phone number to mm. Stuart in Cradle. And he said, "You should totally bring them up, dude. They haven't found someone." But then I was like, my English was so bad <laughs> back then, so I did, like the thought of ringing someone, hey, Jim, yeah. <laughs> no just way. a cold I calling out of nowhere as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just yeah. no way. And that, but I met I mentioned that to Danny when I met him in the bar. Funny Barker gave me Stuart's phone number. And then less than a week later, after I got home, they'd get hold of my number and called me. Wow! So it's it, it, so it's you know it, I think it's 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 really a, a, like a lot of the, the things that have happened to me have have been just. Be those kind of situations of, yeah yeah like uh, same with uh Berheria, because mm. uh, i've been talk i've been talking to jeff you know prior to the 2008 carcass reunion yeah, yeah. i've been talking that because uh we used to meet at festivals whatever and they, he'd yeah. be saying all right are you going to do it without the gates uh, and then yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, and so those reunions happened the same the same year. Yeah, they did, didn't they? Yeah, that was a big year. Yeah. <laughs> so we so we met we met out out at the uh, at the uh, festivals uh, quite a bit then. And 
Sorry, I'm, I've skipped uh, Breheria now. I'm getting onto the parallels <laughs> lost bit. But, but, but at the end, at the end of 2008, it, mm. uh, um, Jeff said, you know, uh, Paradise Lost has a, hasn't got a drummer. Uh, because uh, Jeff had just left. <laughs> and uh, they were going to use a session drummer in the studio. And I just happened to run into Greg at the electric ballroom. Wow. And it, he's from Yorkshire. You know, like, it, what's the chances of that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, but, um, wow. yeah, I'm not saying my entire life is by chance, but. <laughs> Like, no no of course but a lot of it but I, I think uh yeah i think there's a lot to be said for again right place right time and and the networking thing mm. uh, i mean i hate to call it networking because yeah. you know that that makes the whole it makes it sound like it's it's like me and me and bill always say we hate using the term music industry it is an industry but you know mm. it makes it sound so formal and business-like which i hate but yeah it's like it's the networking side of things where you meet enough people eventually someone's gonna as as long as you can you know do uh, uh, if you're a drummer as long as you can play drums to a good standard and you're a good person if you meet enough people you're probably mm. gonna get asked to to play in a band or you know <laughs> eventually and that kind of yeah. the more people you meet the more tours you do the more kind of uh you know as you say the more people you meet on on different levels the more that kind of presents yeah. itself um and uh um, yeah. yeah i can totally I relate man everything i've ever done is because of the same thing running into people or meeting people or touring with someone and getting on with them really well and then uh, two years later yeah. the drummer leaves and blah 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 so it's yeah it's yeah it's a big part of of what we do and it's i don't i don't know if it's talked about i'm sure it's talked about a lot but i don't seem to hear about it that much you know people saying the importance of just being a nice person and and you know speaking to people it's 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 good fun <laughs> I mean, yeah, you think, you think, uh, like, uh, if you take the concept of uh, being in a band, like, you're, the thing that you do the least of is actually playing. <laughs> yeah, like, if true. you think of it, it like, take, take a tour, take a tour, for example, you're playing for like an hour and a half, and then you do like maybe a half an hour sound check. So you're yeah. playing for maximum two hours per day. Yeah. And that's maximum. maximum yeah, absolutely. Uh, maximum, all, yeah. All the other, all the other time is, you know, wherever you you after your basic needs, you're hanging out with <laughs> yeah. people. And if you're an annoying, you can be the best drummer in the world, the best guitar player in the world. If you're an annoying twat, no one wants you around. <laughs> the, it, yeah, it, it's exactly. just you can you can get away with being a virtuoso to a certain point, uh, like if if you don't get on with people, you're not going to be around on the next tour. Next yeah, week. unless unless it's your band and you're some kind of solo artist, then <laughs> oh yeah, true. But then the, the other people are going to leave. Yeah. Oh yeah, exa exactly. And that's what I mean. It's like <clears throat> if you want to live a very lonely, creative existence where everything is on you, and you're the only person in the band that's ever been in the band for more than you know two years, then that's fine. But you know, <laughs> <laughs> but just a warning. <laughs> As we've said, a lot of this stuff has come because of. Um, not luck, but you know, so uh, networking. Have you yeah. always have you always wanted to be as busy as you are? Like, have you pushed to be in as many projects, or do you just kind of say yes <laughs> to to, to uh, most th not most things, but you know, things that you like? Do you just say yes and try and squeeze I'm it in when you can? I'm sort of a, a workaholic, and I'm also mm. just. Uh, I'm just full of ideas the whole time. Mm. And uh, uh, I just have been really fortunate just to to have the option of being in like a lot of bands. You know, <laughs> that, like, <laughs> yeah, that's true. And, 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 and I've been lucky as well that like a lot of the people that I played with are, have been exceptional. So it's mm. turned into something good. You know, like playing in loads of bands is one thing, but if all the bands are like not that good, then <laughs> yeah. then, then that, it's not that, that impressive. That yeah. would <laughs> no. I mean, I it I think, and I think that's uh, a bit of luck as well. I mean, uh, of uh, meeting like uh, the uh, the people in PL 
because yeah. I was a fan of PL myself. And yeah. uh, like the, the way I met the guys in at the gates was just like a pure fluke as well. So it's, uh, I'm just, um, you know, I enjoy the creative process. I enjoy playing. I enjoy uh, being on tour. I, I love traveling. Even yeah. the, like the, the the horrible airport early calls, oh, I, God, I kind yeah. of I kind of like that. <laughs> I kind of like that as well. So it's uh, it's um, there was a point where I I thought this is too much. When I I was in the summer of 2013, mm. uh, I was playing gigs with uh, Brujeria, um, mm. Par- Paradise Lost. Uh, at the gate, the haunted, oh and my uh, god, Valenfire. Oh my god, and it was just, <laughs> I, it was just not possible anymore, like to be I mean, that many bands. Yeah. Every single one of those bands was, you know, that they're six each successful bands in their own right, you know, so just one of those yeah. bands is would be busy enough. And it, again, it's not just the schedules, it's it's remembering all the different sets and remembering the songs and like, Oh yeah. <laughs> and that must have been it was, doing my, <laughs> it was really doing my head in because because uh, <clears throat> like I'd be nervous that like, shit. We haven't played together for like maybe 2 months with one band. And because I'm come, I'm coming straight from another gig. I haven't got oh, time to God. rehearse. You and and shit. Oh fuck! Three o'clock in the morning, airport call. Try to listen to the songs on the flight. <laughs> fall asleep and uh, oh, try to God. listen in the shuttle <laughs> to, to, to the gig. And it's just yeah. So that that's when I decided uh, like yeah, I, I could I couldn't be in Bohemia anymore. And uh, I couldn't be in Va- I couldn't be in Valenfire anymore either. And eventually, it came to a point where uh, at the gates and Paradise Lost were colliding so much it wasn't possible to be in PL anymore either. Yeah, yeah. But I think it's like it's definitely on a more sane level now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was going to say, well, what? How many? Do, how many bands is it? Te- I guess you're technically there's no touring now, but you're still busy. But how many bands is it currently? So Officially, it, anyway. <laughs> so it's uh, at the gate, the haunted, and the lurking fear. Lurking fear, yeah, yeah, and uh, oh, that's and, not too uh, bad then. <laughs> yeah, not too bad. But like, I've, I've got. I've got another band that's uh, on uh, on the horizon that uh, <laughs> that we're making making demos for now. That's wow. going to be, uh, but it's very different, very different uh, kind of more gothy music than uh, oh, okay uh, than previously. So that'd be interesting and clean, all clean vocals as well. So oh, cool. So but, and again, it's instead of doing five of the same band, at least you're doing some di- <laughs> some different stuff to keep yourself in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah totally yeah and as far as like um i guess with drumming itself um mm. have you had much time with this this whole pandemic situation because i found and i've spoken with i don't know if you've listened to any of the other podcasts but most of the other guys i've spoken to this time has been really good for like honing in on what i was shit at on drums <laughs> <laughs> and trying to get and trying to get better at that <laughs> uh, because you know it's it's as you know and probably you still know because you haven't had that much time off it sounds like but um yeah when you're going when you're going full you know full force as a quote-unquote professional drummer you just have you have to be gig ready all the time and and it's very hard to practice stuff that you genuinely want to get better at um yeah and, you know s- stuff that maybe isn't stuff that you need directly for you know a show have you managed to do any of that stuff have you managed to kind of put your mind in that place or are you still just in creative mode and you know well, all that stuff? so so at the at the very beginning uh of the pandemic just uh like sort of early april last year i was uh messaging a lot with uh James that plays in Decapitated now. Uh, oh, the, yeah, James, James Stewart. Stewart. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and because uh, we were on a tour together in uh, he <laughs> filled in for Witchery for Witchery okay. 
and mm-hmm. and then it was uh, the haunted and at the gate mm-hmm. uh also on that same bill. so i was playing two sets and he was playing oh one God. Uh, and uh, he but uh we sort of uh, uh, hung out quite a lot on that tour and i was asking him because he's such a fluent drummer yeah and, it's amazing yeah uh, and i was looking at his you know if i even could like nab like about five <laughs> percent of his technique i'd be, <laughs> be in, in such a such a good place and it uh, could make it so much easier for me for me and he's he sent me a few tips uh and uh because uh, I was actually trying to to learn to play swivel with the feet. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Say, like at, uh, for all all my years, I've just played like all from the hip, basically just stomping <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> as hard as humanly possible. <laughs> yeah, or or as fast as you possibly. Yeah. <laughs> but you get to a limit where you just can't. Yeah, of course. Of you, course. You, yeah. you just it levels out, and I think mm. like at a peak, at a peak on some of the cradle albums, I think I got to like two ten maybe. But yeah, then yeah. I I had a back problem, and then I just couldn't play those parts live anyway, and yeah. it's fucking shit. <laughs> and uh, see, since then, I've sort of been looking for a new way of like getting like over two hundred comfortably. Yeah. And and James said uh, like uh, you got to play like from from your from your ankle, from the otherwise ankle, it's just then, yeah. yeah. Mm. And uh, I when uh, before we had Valenfire of uh, early two thousand eleven, I I had spent like a few years practicing heel toe. Oh yeah! Wow. Uh, and and I sort of I spent like about three years practicing heel toe. Wow. And I, f- I finally finally got it, but it sounds shit acoustically. <laughs> oh yeah, it really absolutely, does. man. Yeah, I can I imagine. Mean, yeah, it, like without if if you if you haven't got triggers or if your triggers ain't working, see you later because it's yeah, just yeah. No, yeah. it's bollocks without it's pointless, triggers. Yeah. <laughs> so no, at least at least how I play it, uh, you know, like it, it just uh, it acoustically it's never as powerful as. Like no, clean th- single hit. I think across the uh, I think across the board. I think that's that's kind of I think that's a relatively well known fact. I think that if you play heel toe, I think again. I'm sorry if I'm offending anyone here, but I think mm. if you don't have triggers, then it's kind of as you say, it's it's almost pointless. And I think in a lot of ways that technique is almost made for that ridiculous super fast. Yeah, kind of, <laughs> yeah. Kind of I mean, uh, on. The- on the latest Chaotian album, there there is some 280 BPM heel toe <laughs> wow. but like, you know, like, uh, like I'm never gonna have to play those live. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, and, like, it, it, so after that tour with where I got to see James play every every mm-hmm. night, I sort of decided, okay, I'm gonna practice swivel now. And yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna, and he, sh- he sent me some exercises, and but then uh, we started writing, and uh, the writing yeah. was taking up more and more time. So I think I got like about four or five weeks of solid practicing of it. Yeah. But then on the new on the new At the Gates album, there's some really tricky, sort of froggy parts that mm. demanded more attention, mm. and then like there's no fast kicks at all on the entire yeah. album so, so, you couldn't so make then that it's a priority like, yeah 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 it just like okay I, i've been out like cycling and <laughs> and yeah. also and then <laughs> it's so just shit excuse really i think it i think that uh, has to do with what type of band you're playing in because mm-hmm. if i was playing in a band that demanded loads loads of uh Cross the kicks, then yeah, absolutely. I would make that. I would make that a priority. Yeah, so, of course. But, uh, but I think you know the age. I'm not making excuses, but the age I've got to. It's like there's so many other aspects of playing drums that I want to explore. Mm. So mm. yeah, and that it all takes so much time and effort, doesn't it? it every tiny little factor that you want to explore, it, it you, you're not just going to get it in two weeks. It takes fucking ages. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's 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 awful. I remember, like <laughs> when we played, 
the first gig with Valenfire, I was practicing uh, practicing at home, and I had I used Axis pedals at the time with those E kits. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, the fucking uh, spring that holds the brass hammerhead snapped in practice, <laughs> and I didn't have I don't have a spare, and like I couldn't make the like heel to work with the mounted the bass drum mounted trigger. I was oh, just like, I see, yeah. this is <laughs> this is like two days or something before leaving for this gig, and oh I was my like, God. I was trying to solder this spring together. <laughs> <laughs> and it's no, just, you know, no re- no disrespect to Axis, but those things aren't made for for heavy hitters, are they? Those uh, no, <laughs> those no, hits. no, it and. It was, <laughs> I just like at the moment. I just want to get to <laughs> where I have to rely less on technology, even on yeah, the yeah. like the lot, even on the last at the gates uh, tour we did in 2019. Mm. We there was because we have the triggers in kick triggers in the front wedges, right? yeah. so everyone has bass drum the whole time, and uh, like the triggers had a spas with one gig and just so. Sort of, loads of double triggering and firing when oh. the bass was playing and stuff. And it's just like, we can't have stuff like this. <laughs> the other yeah, one said, we, like either, it, either it works, uh, or it goes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, no uh, kind and of I was malfunctions. Tweak- <laughs> yeah. And I was tweak, tweaking like crazy and soundcheck. And as soon as we start playing together as band, just, it, it wasn't working and I just couldn't work out what it was and I didn't have enough time to sort of tweak, yeah. tweak it anymore. So then I was like, okay, like, like all acoustic then. Yeah, but then yeah. you're, fa- you're faced, faced with this thing because you haven't heard the acoustic kick for years mm-hmm. playing this stuff. You've heard the mm-hmm. trigger and then all the, I was playing two kicks then as well. Yeah. And, uh, it it was a real real shock to me actually, because <laughs> I, 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 I have like a little in ear mix so that I get sent the kick, mm. got sent the kick drums to. Like I don't remember feeling like this uneven between my legs. Wow! And it took it took like the whole. He's sound guy said this sounds great out, yeah. out out front. Like I can tell that your left leg is weaker, but I just. Mm turn it up yeah, but yeah like it, it, it 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 just had like the most adverse effect on my confidence you know for really? for the playing yeah. and yeah. it was just so like when i got back off of that tour that had uh th- that tour was preceded by the tour with james Oh shit! So, <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, just right, uh, like I need to practice <laughs> at the end of twen- uh, twenty nineteen. I was just like, and I, I need to really readdress like hone, hone what ha- what's hone. happening. Yeah, yeah, hmm. and uh, yeah. But uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens now when uh, if, when gigs start happening again. I have hmm. to get like a live practice set up together yeah it's and it's it's uh it's such a different beast isn't it triggers versus mics like i mean much like you like i'd i'd only played triggers in every other band that i'd ever played in until um until carcass and you know Mm. they were like no fucking way you're not using triggers (laughs) yeah i was like what well why you know please (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and, uh, and i'd i'd honestly because you know the first the first album we recorded uh or the only one of two albums that i've recorded with them surgical steel that again there was no triggers in the studio not even for monitoring yeah. and it was just like it took i'd probably say a good couple of years to get used to like truly comfortable with playing an acoustic ba- and that sounds ridiculous does it it sounds so ridiculous yeah. that an acoustic bass drum because it's it's not just um it's not just i don't know it's it's so many things it's the way it feels it feels different without a trigger mm-hmm. when it, as you know when you hit a trigger no matter how hard you hit it you still get exactly the same response out of it and uh, yeah. you usually have to have the 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 drum muffled a lot more so the drum doesn't mm-hmm. respond as much 
and you can tighten the yeah. head more blah 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 there's so many different aspects yeah. to it and then obviously as you yeah. say like when you come to do like you know like a, an extended section of double bass you're like oh fuck my left foot is terrible <laughs> <laughs> it has no power in it whatsoever shit i've never noticed this before <laughs> yeah <laughs> and it's a, it's yeah a real, it's, it's a real like i you know i have no problem with triggers but it's it it is amazing how uh how different the two things are and they are a complete they're completely different disciplines because i now yeah. playing with triggers i find i find a bit confusing playing with triggers now because i find because i really lean in uh i i bury my beater in the head a lot more now instead of bouncing yeah. it off so i get loads mm-hmm. of double triggering um yeah because you know it's because you know the the beta kind of hits and then rests so it does like a bu- bu- yeah uh where i'm yeah. digging into the head more and i get and and now i'm just like fuck i can't get used to trigger I, like i'm the other way around now like i can't get used to tri- used to using triggers again so it's kind of it's amazing how it's it's a learning curve on both sides when you just think oh one is oh triggers is triggers and then mics is mics it's co- it's a completely different ball game it completely changes the whole feel of your playing i feel it's it's such a crazy yeah, learning curve. complete completely um uh i look for i would look forward to to getting back on the live kit and if yeah, the yeah. house house move that we're planning happens i'm so looking forward to setting up a live practice setup at home which, yeah. which is mic you know because also the way that you hear a live kit through uh when you're sitting down playing it is completely different to what you hear when you put it through microphones absolutely like yeah. i mean this yeah <laughs> i could go on for, forever about that but like <laughs> uh, it's it's something that uh, like i'm really looking forward to mm-hmm. like he- hearing the dynamics that uh, I'm hopefully able to put into to the mics <laughs> in a different way than mm. you know, like all all well and good. I've got like a really nice roll and V drum kit, but it's yeah. not the same thing. Mm. Not the I was same thing say, at all. It, even though, again, yeah, yeah, I totally agree. Because again, mm. I'm in the same situation at the moment. I've got a just an mm. electronic kit, and um, mm. they are insane, especially with all the tune track stuff and you know the superior drummer. Yeah. Um, there are don't you have these... that, didn't you have that sorry to interrupt didn't you have that That's food right. i've yeah didn't this you have is that, it man th- i'm still in yeah? the booth yeah but it's it's not it's not completely soundproof and i'm i live next to well i live re- I'm, a, I'm on a new build kind of estate thing and i live quite close yeah. to my like a lot of neighbors i've got quite a lot of neighbors and because almost everybody's working from home uh around me they d- they didn't tell me to stop playing my acoustic kit, but I'm kind of I'm trying to be a nice neighbour, should we say? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> because for sure. and because the kids are at home more these days as well, and my youngest one has to nap in the day, and he can hear it in his room, so it's kind yeah, of like sure. It's kind of you know again, I'm I'm very lucky. I've got a drum room, and if I wanted yeah. to, I could use the acoustic kit, but I'm tr- I'm trying to be nice, and and when when things kind of ease up a bit and people go back out to work and the kids are back into childcare more, then I'll definitely bring the acoustic kit back. But for now, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be a nice neighbor, basically. So, <laughs> so can, can you hear the, uh, can you hear the kit clearly outside of this booth? Yeah, you can hear, cause it's, the booth is inside my garage uh, and my garage is yeah. like a, it's like a brick built, uh, just a you know regular garage with an up and over door. And my wife says, mm. I guess you'd have to try and uh, I, I'm trying to figure out how far away it is from the living room where my wife sits and watches telly. But when yeah. she's in the living room with all the windows closed and the telly's on, uh, the the living room's really close to uh, to the garage. Um, she said she says she can hear it, but it's not really that noticeable. You know, mm-hmm. it's kind of like a low like a low rumble. But um, yeah. In the summer, and it's getting obviously it's getting to the it's getting to the summer now, and everyone's got their windows open. If you've got your windows open, you can you can hear it. Again, it's not super yeah. loud, but it's it's obvious that it's drums. Do you know what I mean? So and like, enough to piss people off, probably. Yeah, exactly. And you know, you know, I play like not consistently, but I play try and play like at least a couple of hours a day, two or three hours a day. Not obviously full yeah. two or three hour chunks, but you know, yeah, two or three yeah. hours a day of that noise while people are. Uh, working with their windows open and blah, 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 is a bit like you know, yeah, you know, medium no success, <laughs> exactly, exactly, <clears throat> and no one's complained yet. But you know, I speak to my neighbours and 
you know, they always talk about, oh yeah, heard you drumming the other day, blah blah. You know, I'm like, oh shit, Ooh, that was a little, <laughs> that was a little sly, passive aggressive, you know. Kind of <laughs> so I think, uh, yeah, but um, but yeah, I, there is, you know, there is a lot of. Uh, I think there's a lot of positives to the to the electronic kit, not only because of the, you know, they're almost silent. Not not obviously, you can't get completely silent yeah. with drums because you're still wet, especially mm. as hard as you hit them. But um, mm. <laughs> um, like from a writing from a writing perspective, it must be it must be quite. They're handy. incredible. For, I mean, they're absolutely incredible for that. And you know, like all the bands since probably. I think since Damnation and a Day, two thousand and three, yeah, like pretty much all the albums I've been part of, I've done demos on uh, on an uh, Roland wow. kit. Wow, wow! So since then, wow, that's amazing. Yeah, so uh, I had a I had a P uh, TD uh, seven, and I had a TD ten, then uh, I had a TD ten with a TD twenty brain. Yeah. And now I got the T T D thirty kit. Yeah. I have I haven't got the T D fifty like you yet. But uh I I'm not sure how how much difference it would make. Like I'm not using the sounds from the Roland anyway. I'm yeah. using that's the, the thing the tune track sounds. Yeah, the only thing that I've I mean, again, like they're all great. And I had the T D thirty for about eight years, nine years before I got the fifty. Yeah. Um and the only thing um that's really good from the way that we because I'm the same as you I use it with t the tune track stuff um mm. the only real positive versus the TD30 is the 14 inch snare and that's pretty much it oh yeah <laughs> yeah so the snare kind of feels more realistic um yeah but other other than that as a module the the mo and the modules where you where you spend the money really isn't it i mean because yeah. the right the ride is bigger as well it's like an 18 inch ride which is mm -hmm. which is cool and they said because they're usb connected instead of um what's the word uh instead of jacks and they say yeah. that it's it's more sensitive and it's better response but i own i don't really notice that on the ride i notice it a bit on the snare but um, yeah it's more the size I thing that I find is really good, apart uh, aside from every, anything else. But as far as the actual module, I, it's not, you know. It's... I don't know if the software has has uh, develop has been developed to make use of all the different dynamic levels yeah, that, true. Th that the TD50 is capable true. of, especially on the snare and the mm. on the ride. But yeah, uh, it'll right. be interesting in in a couple of years' time when the software when the next version of Superior Drummer comes out, I think yeah. it, we're going to see a massive jump in quality. Yeah, so it's Superior Drummer 4, yeah. whenever that is, whenever yeah. that arrives. <laughs> <laughs> Which will probably there's be... So uh, many, there's so many good, uh, uh, like, plugins now, so it, that is pretty, that's another thing that's pretty cool about the, the e-kit setups, mm. that you have... Uh, you know, like you could swap from a Bonham kit to like, a, <laughs> yeah, exactly. like, like I, I recently got get good drums. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, after seeing you playing it, actually. Oh, wow. Cool. I decided <laughs> <That's I, good. laughs> I'm, I'm getting this. Um, yeah, oh, awesome. I, 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 I struggled for ages with the, with the cymbals. The cymbals uh, were tricky. They took me a, a while to get, to get down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I don't think I have have them down properly yet. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, it's for demoing purposes and and day to day practicing. It's it's invaluable. I mean, it's it's yeah, incredible. Yeah, yeah. And again, you can just kind of play as long as you want, really. And I feel there's almost yeah. like because because the. Um, you know, because it's mesh and it's it is easier to play. Let's be honest. I'm sure you find mm. when you go into an acoustic kit, it's like playing on a bunch of pillows after playing. <laughs> after I playing mean, on the I, roller kit. <laughs> I play. I play the. Sa I, I like to think that I play the same way uh, mm. on a uh, on my electric that I do on my yeah on my live kit. But uh, I I noticed that uh, very. Obviously, now when we did the last at the gates album, that it's that it's not the same. <laughs> Especially if you have like on the bigger, uh, bigger floor toms, 
Yeah, of course. It's, it's, yeah, it's it's like you really you think about that. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Yeah, they're the they're the little things, aren't they? That you that you don't mm. quite think about until you're in the moment. Like, oh shit, this is 18 inches versus 12 inch mesh pad. <laughs> 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 That's a lot of but, space. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, but um, what was I going to say? I was going to say one more thing. I've I've realised I've kept you for ages, so I, I won't I won't make this <laughs> too much right. longer. I, I do apologise. That's but, all right. Um, That's all right. Um, oh yeah, so. Did you move to the UK um, when you were with Cradle? Was it was that your initial that, move to the UK? That, yeah, that's when I when I moved here. Yeah, in ninety nine. So wow. this year it'll be twenty two years. Wow, now. dude! Jesus, yeah. And, yeah. and now with everything going on, I guess you uh, you probably want to escape. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I I always liked the culture in the UK. Although I do, I do occasionally miss um, uh, miss Swedish food, yeah. but there is, uh, I've noticed there are quite a few Swedish uh, foods that have, shops that have popped up actually. Oh, so so I can get the bare sort of essentials. There's even a, a Swedish bakery in London. They wow. the bake like Swedish cakes and wow. and Swedish bread and like cookies and and what have you and um that was uh that was the toughest part actually about moving Mm. because you 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 know you have your favorite foods that yeah that you just couldn't get here and it's it's such a subtle differences that like you're like the brand of macaroni that you buy (laughs) it sounds silly but like Oh, what the hell is this? Like, I can't <laughs> find anything that's ne- yeah, <laughs> similar I, to what I'm used to. It's, I guess that's the... Uh, uh, oh, sorry. But now I've been here so long, you know, like uh, I've uh, sort of embraced the wild, wild culture, uh, yeah, the, different, yeah. the different types of restaurants and stuff that you can go to, like from all over the world it's you know it's really it's london or england is such a cool place for that yeah i'd so. say i guess that's one thing i i from obviously we've we've all been lucky we've both been lucky to travel a lot but that's one thing mm. that's quite it's quite nice about the uk is it does seem to be pretty multicultural and you can find a lot of cool stuff that isn't necessarily yeah. from here that somehow yeah. worked its way into the culture, which is which is really really cool. I like that you can, uh, yeah, especially food because yeah. our food traditionally is a bit shit, so we have to steal food from other people <laughs> to <laughs> to make it somewhat manageable. <laughs> I didn't say it; you said it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know, I did. <laughs> I mean, I do, I do like to, uh, some traditional UK food actually. So, so it's. Um, not too bad it's all it's good too bad. no <laughs> okay. it's good that's cool man well yeah i don't know if you know but i do uh i like to do these little quiz things at the end of every uh every episode it's like a, no if, that was a nice surprise <laughs> okay it's like a e so it's the e, i call it the either or game i don't know if there's a real i don't know if it, that's uh-huh. the real name of it but i'll get i give yeah. you two things and you have yeah. to tell me your your preference of the two things that i uh okay that i say do you want to go yeah. for it? Okay. Yeah, sure. It? Okay, cool. Right. So, and this will be the last thing and then I'll let you go because I've kept you okay, for two hours. Good. So. <laughs> oh, <it's cool. laughs> okay, cool. So, coffee or tea? Uh, coffee. Coffee. Respect. Uh, d- have you learned to, to like English breakfast tea? Are you an English uh, breakfast tea guy? I just, I, yeah, I drink tea occasionally, but like, I just, I like that rush. Yeah, uh, and, <laughs> like uh, I have, I have three different types of coffee makers at home. So oh, I'm wow. totally into, I'm totally into coffee. Oh, are you like, are you, are you, are you a snob, or are you just into it? You just kind no, of... I just, uh, I, I wouldn't say snob, but like, uh, <laughs> I, I grind my own beans, and so, oh, like nice. I have an, I have an espresso maker, I have a, like a nice filter maker, and I have a percolator, so. I do. Wow. I do do. Uh, I am into coffee. Yeah. That's totally. pretty serious. I like that. I like mm. that. Cool. Right. So, morning or evening? Are you a morning or evening person? Morning. Respect. I, I, you, I, do you wake up early? Uh, 
considerably earlier than my wife. <laughs> but then, uh, but then I, uh, I sort of, if I try to f- watch a film in the evening, I have to sit upright, otherwise I'll fall asleep. <laughs> and it doesn't even have to be that late. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, dude, this is a late night for me right now. This is uh, yeah. for uh, for anyone who doesn't know, it's twenty past ten p.m. in the evening. So uh, that's how <laughs> rock and roll. I am at the moment, but uh, I've got young kids. That's my excuse. But uh, <laughs> cool. Okay, so summer or winter? Um, summer, I would say. Uh, okay. Um, uh, probably winter when I lived in Sweden, uh, where there oh, was yeah. proper snow. Yeah, where there was proper snow. Uh, but like when you get like those hot half measure winters with just Rain. slush puppy on the street oh, and or God. or cold cold rain from the side it's just horrible <laughs> but uh uh but uh summer otherwise yeah, I, I, I like scuba diving and uh and now cycling of course and running yeah, and you know fun. i prefer summer for sure and yeah. barbecues of course oh man i'm excited oh dude if you move out to the countryside that's going to be amazing getting some Epic. serious barbecue action going on <laughs> <laughs> Right, so what are we on? Oh, yeah. Beach or countryside? Um, countryside. Yeah, for sure. I can understand I mean, that, I, d- yeah. I, do like, I do like the ocean, but uh, I don't like to lie and just fry myself in the sun. Yeah. Like, I'll, I'll <laughs> we'll go diving or snorkeling or something, and then we'll go inland. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Right, this one could be controversial. London uh-huh. or Stockholm? Uh, London. <laughs> Oh really? I guess you've lived yeah. there, but still, yeah. Yeah, for, easy, for a long easy. Time. I mean, Stockholm's a nice city, though. Um, but, yeah, I love uh, Stockholm. Um, if I was going to live in a city, I'd live in London, which I yeah. do anyway. But uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> have you ever have you ever flirted with the idea of going going back to live in Sweden? No, not really. Yeah. I mean, because um, I've I've got the with me and my wife have had the studio now for like over 10 years. Yeah. And that could, that, I mean, that could never be run in Sweden. Yeah. And uh, so not really. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. I'm, I'm not, I'm not saying no, but like for the time being, definitely not. For the foreseeable future, you're a, you're a Brit. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I'm so, I'm, I feel, I feel sorry for you. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> right okay so crisps or chocolate oh crisps oh you're a savory guy yeah totally oh. i'm uh i'm all about crisps of uh, different flavors and oh surprising nice <laughs> it's sweet i i'm gonna stick my head out a bit and say that sweden actually do the best crisps in the world wow I don't think I've ever had Swedish crisps, so I can't comment on that. Mm. <laughs> uh, but at the same time, I've I've tried to introduce some of my friends to Swedish crisps. Yeah. And they're just like, what the fuck is this? Just get it away. <laughs> so, What's different about but, Swedish crisps? Well, the, I would say generally they're thicker and uh, um, uh, okay. and they have that wavy... Um, crinkle, crinkle uh, cut. R- crink, crinkle cut. Yeah. And... Uh, also, um, more adventurous with the flavors, I'd say. Oh, interesting. I need oh, to there, some I mean, crisps. There are some really good ones from the UK, but like mm. for a while, it was sort of like Walker style crisps, yeah. Yeah. like really thin. Yeah. Okay, good. Fl- Airy. <laughs> Airy, yeah. <laughs> but um, I do like uh, some uh, UK crisps, uh, like McCoy's. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're thick, aren't they? They're thick as fuck. Yeah. They? <laughs> they're, actually, some of my u- favorite UK crisps are Brannigans. They're really hard to get hold of. Oh, you can only get them in yeah. pubs. Yeah, and, I've seen uh, them. I've never had them. I've seen them, yeah. They have one <laughs> play, uh, um, beef, uh, roast beef and horse radish crisps. <laughs> they're super good. <laughs> but yeah, def- definitely a crisp man. Oh well, okay. So this might make the uh, next question not so important. Um, dairy milk, or is it is it pronounced marabou or marabou? You know the Swedish chocolate. 
Yeah. Yeah, uh, Dairy Milk or Marabou. It's Marabou's good, man. Mm. I ate loads of that yeah. when we were recording the album. <laughs> they, they, they've they changed the recipe on that. I don't know what, the, uh, something to do with the fat they use in the chocolate. Oh. It's it's not quite as good as it, as it was up to sort of early 2000. Oh, so, I so I, uh, no, I'm going to say Marabou anyway. Because <laughs> like they, <laughs> cause they do, they do some really good flavors. Yeah, that's what I like, dude. There's the one with the, um, is it Ritz crackers in it? I think it's Ritz oh, yeah. crackers. Yeah. Uh, I mean, on paper, that sounds ridiculous, but it's so incredibly tasty. <laughs> uh, they had one now when I was in the studio with the salty licorice and the chocolate. Oh, and my God. It, <laughs> But crispy, crispy bits of salty licorice. Oh, okay. Super, okay. super good, super good. That's uh, that's very Scandinavian, right? The uh, salty licorice. There again, I had uh, dairy milk with uh, the Oreo bits in. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you had that? Yeah, that that's is, good. That's yeah. That's my, that's game changer. I eat that way too much. <laughs> 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 oh right, so I'm never, I'm never going to let you go, am I? I've got loads more of these questions. Right, um, Coke or Pepsi, or do you not drink either? You can say no to uh, drink them. Ooh, I like both. Oh, interesting, uh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not I strong either. I'm way. not fussy. Either. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm not too keen on Pepsi Max, by the way. So, I'll yeah. Have it. Well, for, you know, um, I've told this story before, but I'm going to tell you anyway because you know, you know him very well. Obviously, Chris, Mass, me time. Uh, Chris yeah. Mamod, um, he, uh, you know, when you go into a restaurant and you and you ask for a Coke and they say, "Oh, we've only got Pepsi." Is that okay? You know, most of the time, everyone says, "Yeah, yeah, that's fine." Chris is the only person I've ever met that said, "No, I will have a water." <laughs> yeah. Actually, we have a tech uh, a, a tech in at the gates camp that yeah. uh, he's just said, "No, thank you, water or wine." Instead. <laughs> <laughs> like if they don't have it like the normal full fat coat or full yeah, yeah that's coat, the same yeah just, that's the same yeah, with chris yeah <laughs> it's obviously uh, it's obviously more of a thing than i realized it was <laughs> i yeah. thought everyone just said yeah it's fine right cool okay so youtube or netflix oh net oh no <laughs> Fuck, that's a difficult one <laughs> it's tricky that one isn't it oh, oh i don't know i like net i like that i use them for different things Netflix yeah, exactly. for like the the end of the evening watching, um, but uh, YouTube for sort of during the day. Yeah, yeah. I I want to watch uh, Netflix during the day generally because it's too uh, then it's <laughs> yeah then it's if I if I'm watching something during the day it's going to be YouTube. Yeah. Like, uh, so you can't. So you're basically a fifty fifty. You can't choose. There's no preference. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no. I would like if I have to choose, I'd probably say YouTube. Yeah, I I agree with that. There's there's maybe a yeah. wider variety of things that you can find on there. Oh yeah, for uh, sure. Right, okay, I think I probably know the answer to this one after this conversation. But running mm -hmm. or bike ride? Um, that's very difficult as well. <laughs> <laughs> At the moment, it's bike riding, but like uh, there's something I write, uh, love about running that is. <clears throat> it as soon as you stop, mm. like it stop moving your legs, you stop basically. Yeah. So, like it, like you get nothing for free with running. That's why I like yeah, I, I like I that. But but uh, there's so many aspects of bike riding that's absolutely absorbing. Like mm. seeing the landscape, uh, yeah. obviously the physical exercise and pushing yeah. yourself, but yeah. also then there's all the all the gadgets that come with it and like <laughs> yeah. the, the lycra clothing and like, <laughs> like I haven't, I haven't bought my own. So I'm, I'm looking at bikes, but like I've, I got to wait a while, but you yeah, yeah. like the tech in bike riding. is just silly. Like oh, down to, imagine, yeah. yeah. I mean, Everything made of carbon and then electronic yeah. shifting gear. Stuff. Oh my it's, god! It's not. It's, it's well, not. It's, you... it's that whole thing where you know, like, um, obviously, technology is advancing so much in everything we see. 
you know, like yeah. computers and phones. But there's so many industries that probably both of us don't even know about where the same amount of technology is moving on. Like, like you said, like, you know, like in bikes, like I wouldn't have even thought about that. But of course, bikes are like uh, space bikes right now, probably. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, and there's no, so no, many it, other it, industries it, where that kind of stuff's happening and we don't even know about it. It's terrifying. <laughs> yeah. But, but it, it, I've been a fan of gadgets. So it's, uh, that's one of the aspects that <laughs> yeah. grew me into it as well. It adds more. Yeah, exactly. Even more eBay uh, scrolling. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> right, cool. Okay, sorry. I will let you go eventually. Right, these the next few are music slash drum related ones. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay, so studio or live? Mm. Uh, probably live. Okay. I love being in the studio, but like uh, the songs uh, come to life when you play them. Uh, on a stage which is uh, yeah you get, yeah it's incredible irreplaceable yeah but, absolutely I agree yeah um, festival or club that's a difficult <laughs> one as well I they would probably say oh that's a I can't I don't know if I can choose <laughs> uh, they've both got so uh, many good different things haven't they yeah, a, a festival probably. Yeah, festival. Okay, cool. Yeah, when you get when you get a good one, it's 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 a, it's a life changer sometimes, isn't it? Like playing the yeah. massive stages if you have a good show and great crowd. Yeah, but then also when it's shit at a festival, it's absolutely terrible. <laughs> it's the it's worst ever. Yeah. Like like a, <laughs> like a shit gig at a festival is way worse than a shit gig in a club. I think it's so true. Yeah, it's so true for for so many reasons that we won't go into now. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I totally agree. Right, this one's this one could be controversial. Um, <clears throat> European tour or US tour? Um. I'm gonna say U.S. tour because ah, interesting, uh, interesting. I I I love the the landscape. Uh, mm. I love the uh, I love the. It's like traveling to, to different countries when you're in the U.S. Yeah, like different parts of yeah, the U.S. Right. It, it's just and um, it, I love the food there. Yeah, and uh, um, usually the buses and the traveling accommodation is better. The buses and, are really nice, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, and uh, it's like the it's the country is sort of built for a life on the road more than mm. in in Europe. You get to certain parts of of Europe and it's closed after a certain time. Whereas in the states, most of the time, if you're fairly you find civil, something that's in the open. Si- yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We were saying uh, I can't remember who I was saying it to, but a su- a day off on a Sunday in a lot of mainland Europe is just the worst <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah nothing's open nothing to do nowhere to go you just gotta sit in the bus or in the hotel and just hope for the best <laughs> <laughs> yeah so definitely u.s tour for sure respect cool. okay so double pedal or two single kick drums mm, uh, i've gone back and forwards with this uh, over the years but i'm back on double pedal yeah do you, pre- do you prefer yeah. in general yeah, because it just uh, physically it, it brings a tighter setup, uh, mm. and because uh, because I'm older, I prefer to make stuff easier for myself. <laughs> I and like a big double bass kit is just equipped with so many physical problems for me. Yeah, and the tuning two bass drums to sound the same and all that. Oh, fucking crazy! Yeah, that that <laughs> as well. But like uh, uh, till. Till I got my Charles Capito pedals, I hadn't found a double pedal that uh, actually could keep up with mm-hmm. uh, with it. But like n- now, that pedal is is that good with the left that like I have, I have no reason. There's no to have lag kick. whatsoever. Yeah, no latency no. on that left pedal whatsoever. Yeah, no. And I guess and I guess that's the ideal, isn't it? As a, a perfectly balanced double pedal is pretty much the same as a. As two single kicks almost. <laughs> oh, oh, it's it. it I, I put them aside or put them apart for, for two kicks for, mm. for, the, for a while. Mm. And that was, that was good. But I mean, I, cause it, 
like uh, the distance between the hi hat and the ride becomes yeah. too big for me. Yeah. And like I get I get this pain in between my shoulder blades mm. when the kit gets too big. Too and wide. that's why I yeah. Per- yeah, that's basically why I prefer to yeah, have a t- type of setup and uh, with a double pedal. It's just yeah. so easy. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um where am I? I've totally lost where I am. Right, wood snare or metal snare? Do you have a preference or do you mm. like them all? <laughs> I I really don't mind if it's if it's a good sounding snare I don't mind. Okay, in the middle. I like that. Cool. Okay. Yeah. This is the final drum one. Triggers or mics? Mm. <laughs> I would have to say mics now. Yeah, although okay. I can, uh, as we were saying before, yeah. <laughs> yeah, although uh it's pretty it's pretty uh, exhilarating for me when the triggers work and and uh, the heel toe works. <laughs> That's pretty exciting. <laughs> but uh, when when the same said the situation fails, it's fucking yeah. nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. really is. There's yeah, there is a lot less to go wrong, isn't there, with the microphones? Yeah. And I remember uh, we did some shows. Obviously, I I played with Evan Burn for a bit, but we did some shows with them in uh, South America, and. Um, Chris, the drummer, brought his, you know, his trigger module set up and I was setting my kit up and I just, you know, I had no cables pretty much apart from my little in-ears and, you know, the little in-ear uh, thing that I've got. And he just uncoils all these cables and he just looked at me and he was like, fuck you, man, I want that. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, it's great not having cables. <laughs> yeah, I mean, one big positive of microphones. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's... Yeah, with way less that could go wrong, and yeah, there exactly. there are. I mean, I've tried to sum sum up how many different things can go wrong, on the kit. <laughs> and it just yeah. like there's a never ending list of things <laughs> yeah, that can happen. Exactly. exactly, and you have to deal with it in the moment whilst you're playing on stage as best you can. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right, cool. So, final final little thing. Uh, if you could do it, it might be too tricky, but. I like to do like a top three thing and I do, do it different every week. Uh, yeah. Top three festivals as a performer. If you can do oh. it, it could be, it could be too hard. I'll narrow it down to Europe, European festivals. I mean, that's really the main. Okay. For okay. Well, in, uh, <laughs> in that case, I'm going to say Brittle Assault, Hellfest and Gross Pop. Oh, they are three good choices, but, dude. Respect. But uh, I would, uh, it, they are good for different reasons, but, and uh, yeah. they would. I would say they could easily share the first place. For so different all, reasons, yeah, yeah, for different reasons. They are all absolutely incredible to play at, yeah. And uh, it's hard to put them in uh, to put them in rank order. Absolutely, yeah. I totally agree. That. Uh, that, they're great choices. Great choices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but those th- three for sure. Yeah. Oh, that's that's got. I thought that would be harder, but yeah, it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> there's there's three yeah. very very good ones. But yeah, man, mm. that's that's everything. Thank you so much for. No, uh, it's been great. It's been really good fun. Yeah, man, th- and thank you for agreeing, and uh, and thank you for taking the time. I hope uh, I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. It's been really cool. I, I have. It's been excellent. Thank you. No, man, thank you. I really, and, uh, really enjoyed it. Thank you. Uh, yeah, and it's nice to. Uh, it's just nice to catch up. I don't think we've ever really had a a long nerdy drum chat like that before no not that long anyway no we haven't <laughs> no not this long <laughs> no, no it's exactly. been great yeah oh man yeah thank you i'm glad really you enjoyed it fun. too hey, uh, <laughs> have a wicked evening man thank you so much again and yeah let's keep it you too mate right okay easy, we'll do. Man. cheers thanks dude bye bye